And we're live. <laughs> morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra, special, big up. Shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to the drivers. Shout out to the Uber driver, Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery drivers, round town and long distance truck drivers. Shout out to the crossing guards. Shout out to the school teachers. Shout out to the garbage truck drivers. Shout out to the AC techs. Shout out to... <laughs> I'm trying not to forget anybody because, you know, somebody, I'm going to say, so flow, how come you never shout me out? Regardless of what your profession is, shout out to the engineers, shout out to the nurses, shout out to the medical field, period. Shout out to law enforcement personnel, shout out to military personnel. Whatever your profession is, man, from the highest point, um, the upper echelon of the ladder, whether you are some big time prominent politician, CEO, something, or you are the guy that sweep the street and pick up garbage. If you're out here to get it by the sweat of a man's brow, so shall he eat bread and you're grinding for yours, then I have enough respect for you. So manners and respect to you. And thank you for being here this morning, especially if you're one of them people that with a clean heart and a clear conscience and you wish good for others genuinely as much as you wish good for yourself. You're a good person right there. Here we are this morning on this beautiful Monday morning. I wasn't here on Friday. The chat is up and running. It's open this morning, so everybody can check in this morning. I feel like I owe it to everybody to start off Monday morning like this, right? Open up the chat, make everybody come in and send them peace and these kind of things because... We weren't here. We weren't here. I had to do a crazy run. And now that I'm back, I can say it. I think I covered about five states, about five or six states in a two-day period, right? So man's was busy, fam. I was busy, right? Did a whole lot of driving and all these things. And now me feel sick. I think I'm having one of those Alice the Crab Lady situations. That's what I woke up to this morning anyways, you know. I drink a hot beer, and next thing me know, but my, my drink wasn't a hot beer. It was a <laughs> it was a, a mixed drink. I drink a one mixed drinks, and next thing me know, you know, brrr, everything just come out, and, you know, I couldn't hold it. And <laughs> so that's what my night's been looking like. I got sleep early yesterday because I say I'm starting at 6 o'clock this morning. And next thing we know, midnight, my watch said 12.04 on the dot when my belly said, Burp. I said, damn, my back hurting because obviously I wasn't sleeping good. So I have to twist and turn and then me wake up and my belly just go on with itself. <laughs> my belly I argue with itself. <laughs> Boy, I had to rush to the bathroom. So TMI, TMI, <laughs> might be too much info, but... I not go on. I not go on. So I ain't feeling too great this morning, but you know the show must go on. Right? Right. So we still give thanks because we are here. And look around belly, that different from um ultimate sickness. So we still <laughs> we still give thanks. We can't deal with the liquor run belly. I have some mint tea on deck this morning to make the belly feel a little better, soothe it over, and so on and so forth. I think it's time for me to get back into a fitness regime. I've been neglecting myself for too long. That I go on. See? It? Big up to everybody. Um, Elaine Brown, I see you, family. Thank you for being here. Shout out to everybody tuning in this morning. A colleague, Angel D. I had a wicked dream. I had a wicked dream. You have to share that dream here. Before we get into our topics this morning, so we're going to talk about more Haitians have arrived in Jamaica. We're going to talk about Miss Kitty getting married. La, 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 la. Miss Kitty there. All right. And then we're going to talk about Jack York. Well, I might show you the video of Jack York's daughter singing. Oh, man. Time flies, and I watched this little girl sing. Come here, have a heart, you know. So I'm gonna just crude, and you know, I, I watched her sing yesterday. And for some reason, I was like, Who the hell is cutting onions in here? I think there's something in my eye, my eyeballs are sweating. Um, so I had to come off of it, but I was watching her sing with so much passion and stuff. And um, I remember when our father got locked up, right? Jack Yor just recently, not too long ago, got his prison time in the Netherlands. And I said in previous videos that him and his daughter are like this. So this is probably going to be hard on her. 
but she have a good mommy and she have a good family around her. So she's going to be taken care of as well. But you know, that bond between father and daughter, that's like this, it regardless, but boy, did she take, did she take talent from her father though? Boy, she, and she grew so fast. You know, people see my kids too. And they're like, Whoa, this, is this the little boy that I'm like, yeah, he ain't no little boy no more. He's six feet three inches tall and you know the, all my boys are over six feet tall now except for kai and kai does long amaga and look like he's gonna be the same thing too so the kids don't stay little for long but watching his daughter sing man was so touching it was like oh that's it pull my heartstrings pull my heartstrings so we're gonna watch she look a bit hopefully her mom doesn't feel any way about me playing the video uh, if anything uh Y'all could just say, SoFlo, take it off, and I will edit it out, okay? I'm not trying to capitalize off anything. We follow Jack Your's case all the way through, and I've always said that that's still our brother, right? I've always maintained that, right? That regardless of what, he could have dealt with the situation differently, but that is still our brother, and I'm not in the business of kicking him when he's down or any of my brothers when they're down. We all fall short of grace. We all make mistakes. We're humans, and, you know... In life, you have action and then you have reaction. So if certain actions didn't take place, there would not have been a certain reaction that led him to wear. Not to say that I'm putting blame on anybody else, but like I explained to my audience before, some people are dead serious. Some people are dead serious. And if you cross them the wrong way, they will sacrifice everything to make an example out of you. And obviously, Cure is one of them kind of people that right? got crossed up the wrong way. And, you know, he sacrificed a lot to, to make an example out of a certain person. Now, where that leaves him is where his, you know, he's out, his daughter's out here growing up without him. And we're watching her grow fast, fast. But the talent is what I'm going to speak about this morning. Beautiful talent. Beautiful talent. Philip Paulwell gave his little speech, um, released a message. We're going to talk about that because over the weekend, his, I don't know if I should call her common law wife. But they've been together for eight years and changed. So let's just use common law just to differentiate her from the other baby mother, right? So she's been officially charged. Leota um, Bradshaw, her name is. She's officially charged. And we're going to get into the details of exactly what happened with the baby and the mother and how all that. Why that... I looked at the little girl picture this morning when, me asked, when, when I'm doing the icon for this video, and my heart just sank. Just looking at that little baby girl's picture, my heart just sank. And I actually took his picture, Philip Paulwell picture. I'm going to put it right next to the little baby girl picture. Splitting image of her daddy. Splitting image. Now, remember, I know. I've said, women have a type. So nobody feel like so because you look like yours or look like you so much, then it must be yours. A woman would there with you and if she going to do something on the side is because she's attracted to another guy that looks exactly like you. Reminds her of the good side of you when things did good between you and she. So she going to fling it up on him and him breathe her. And you know, the thing gets very complicated in this you are not the father kind of situation, DNA testing and all these things. So I still encourage my brothers to get the DNA test so you know for sure that your children are yours. You don't want to be paying child support for 18 years or raising somebody else's child and thinking it's yours. And at the end of all that, you find out, say, boy, I was a jacket. Yeah. And even though you know the jacket, you, you thought the jacket fit right, it wasn't yours. So, but looking at that child, though, with all that scratch out, looking at that child and looking at the man there, boy, Philip, um, you know what they used to say in Jamaica? Anyhow, you did go before a judge and say, this is not yours. The judge should have slapped you. The judge should have just get up off of the stand, walk, come down to where you lay in the courtroom and just give a big ears as hard because that baby looks so much like him. That child looked splitting image of him, man. Splitting image of him. Uh, and I can't imagine anything more than, you know, it's one thing to find out that your man who you're telling people is your husband has fathered another child outside of your relationship with some other woman. But I can only imagine seeing the child 
and then seeing how much the child look like. Like as soon as you look at the child, you see a man face. Yeah, that will that that will anger anger even more. Cause if you ask some woman, they're like, I guess some art start bubbling up. Me some start as some kind of hateful feelings, you know. Because when they look at the little picnic, I see the picnic look just like him. Hey, hey, life happens. But we're gonna get into those details. And there's a lady who's looking for her son, and I think we need to use our platform to highlight him. We've done this before on SoFlow TV and ended up finding. I think we found like two or three family members before. One was a missing father who's who just walk off. I uh, don't know if he was experiencing like early onset of dementia or whatever. I don't remember. The people might be watching, so I don't want to make up nothing. But they had contacted me about their dad. And we circulated a video and, you know, ended up finding him. Because somebody was watching our video and actually saw him in a different part of Jamaica and contacted local law enforcement, which contacted his family and two other people. We ended up helping. So I know it works or we're hopeful that it will work. So we have a one person here we're going to show as well and give the story behind him. This is her only child, but he's a grown man. He's in his 40s, but it's the woman only picnic. And him have some mental issues are going and he went missing. Right. So we're going to, all, all that is on the table for this morning. Before we go there, I think I want to start off with Miss Kitty this morning. See the girl was jealous of the baby. Jacket situation have and will always exist till the end of time. It is a sad situation when an innocent child is killed for probably sheer jealousy. Just sad. Berdale, Jacket doesn't have to exist until the end of time. People need to start being responsible. And I want to ask the woman them something, right? Because anytime a man asks for a DNA test. Oh, so what you say? Or what are you trying to say? The child is not yours? Okay, well, I'm going to tell your child that you didn't want them. And yeah, you can get your DNA test. You can get it. But once you have your DNA test, we don't want to have anything to do with you again. Why do y'all go at it like that? Hmm? That's what a lot of men face as soon as they ask for a DNA test. See? Me not hide my business. I've said that before. I have one out there as well. Palm my own. But that's the drama that goes behind it. Simply asking for a DNA test so we can pick up from here and move forward. Every time you don't bring up a DNA test, conversations are good. Everybody is lovely, laughing, and everything. Soon as you say DNA test, them cut you off, them don't want to talk to you no more. You know what? Go on with your life. We don't need you kind of thing. And then them come back again and then we mend again and we talk again and we mention DNA and then disappear again. This is a personal thing for me, right? But I've seen other men go through it too. So women will always be that because they themselves have a doubt. But if you're 100% sure that that child is yours, they should, there shouldn't be no, no riff and row about it. You want a DNA um, test? Here, sit here. Okay, now you know the child is yours. Handle it like a grown man. Done. That's it. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning, SoFlo. Let me pause. Let me pause. Yeah, Sorry. you have to turn that down. Yeah, yeah, hear me? Yeah, loud and clear too. Yeah, good morning, fam. Good morning, yes, family. Man. How you doing? I'm blessed. All right, you so. see that thing with the DNA and so I have one out there too, you know, that yeah. I can't find. <laughs> All right, so. And it's not even the girl come and say she's pregnant, you know. Me, you see the night when we sleep with her. Mm-hmm. The next morning, I called my friend, you know, one other female. And I said to her, I said, the girl pregnant, you know. And she said, oh, you, the you, girl you pregnant. feel it, I don't? Said, if the girl not pregnant, I blank me a shoe. <laughs> well, you say, you feel it. <laughs> you feel I it. Said, when I <laughs> let off another girl, brother, I don't know what she has. Celestial heavens opened up before yeah, you. Man. You don't know if you explain it. But you and, feel it. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I tell you honestly. And you see the thing with these girls? Mm -hmm. I had a feeling she slept with somebody else, you know. Don't get me wrong. See. Right? But me, they know say I'm a breeder. But the mother, mm -hmm. you see the woman them and the mother them, mm -hmm. them influence them daughter so much like they want to control them. Mm -hmm. And it's like they're, they're the last straw for them life. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, come on, man. So what are you telling this child now that he's growing up? If the child even look at you and say, who's my dad? <laughs> and I'll put a name out there, you know. I yeah. don't care who I'm vexed. Stepdaddy, you know? stepdaddy is always an option for them. 
um, you know, they will fling the kids by a stepdaddy. And we, we talk about that too. Like a lot of kids who grew up with a stepdaddy, if you think about it, you never had a choice. It's who your mother like you had to accept. Even when time she asks you, right? And she's like, um, so I want to bring James around because, you know, I've been seeing James for a while now and all this. And he's coming over tonight and whatever, meet you guys. After James come over and meet the kids, if you say, right, mom, I don't like him. I just don't like him. You know what the end the answer is going to be from her after that? Well, you just have to go deal with him and get to like him because me and him in love are, I love him, you know? And these guys, so the children never really get a choice. The children have to deal with, okay, here's a guy that she's going to give me as a daddy um, or a daddy figure. And I guess I'm going to have to just deal with that kind of thing. It's important to go find the damn child's real father, man. And every child deserves to know who their daddy is, whether you are with them or not. That's just my stance. So a DNA shouldn't bring about an argument. A DNA should be closure to any doubt. That way man can fully participate and be active. See? You, you know, the thing is, they beat the father them, right? Mm -hmm. I try to be very active. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna call name eh? because anybody <laughs> within a can call name. Let them hear the name. Jesus Christ. I'm in a business and can call look for me. The views of our Veronica Russell Rascal. and Keisha Ellington God have mercy. and them have a son named um, Kyle. Mm. <laughs> Veronica you know, and, and Keisha. Keisha, I want a wicked young name. I'm rough right here, Keisha. I remember the man with the, with the Bible in him drawers and in church shoes out the road. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wicked. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm gone. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be honest. Like, guys, man, come on. Like, the child, he might have, if I film a picnic, mm -hmm. he has so much brothers and sisters. So, wait, why you call two, why you call two women? Why you call two women named just now? It's two of them? Because the mother was the influencer. Oh, so one is a daughter and, and one is the mother. The mother named Veronica Russell. Rotten. And the girl named Keisha Ellington. That's crazy. Shit, you know? Yeah. So, you know? Born October 4th, whatever, whatever, right here. Anybody know her? Like, come on, man. Billy. Wait. So, hold on. Um, did y'all no, eventually Anna get Kyle, I Hayden, Hayden. I Hayden, she named the Hayden. child. Sorry. Yeah, Hayden. She named the child Hayden. Did y'all eventually yeah. get a DNA test done? That was what even I asked that I wanted done. And the mother disappeared. The grandmother took her and moved her away. Yeah. Right. And I right. lost touch with them. Mm. You know, so the child grew up all the time. You know, I was supporting the child. My sister, even when we in a jail, I don't care for talk, I don't run for talk. My sister used to go around bring the bag. Mm -hmm. All the women used to, I wish, I wish, I, I wear the money there. Oh, she care which about one had the bag of money, you know? Right. And oh. the grandmother never even alerted the daughter to say, you see, all the stuff that you got, mm -hmm. all the baby stuff, everything, and the father bring them coming up. And it's a good man, and you for respect made it this look man. Like and she give him... was the one that was providing and helping her daughter. Cha -cha. So yeah, no man, DNA, and that child Marcus. is just out there. That child is just out there, then. That child, they don't know it's, you as daddy. He's just out there. Mm. And you have a strong we feeling need, that that's we your need child. need to stop the mockery so slow. Seriously. Yo, blood, you know she probably gave that child to somebody. <laughs> she probably gave that child yeah. to somebody else already, you know. I tell her next one, self oh, him. Yeah. And that next man ain't asking for no DNA. He just happy that it also oh, I made it going there, so I mine and just take it and run with it. Some man foolish like that. Them just take anything the woman give them and say, Yeah, it's mine. Ja, ja. Uh, and then we turn around again, like I said. Them up blame man. They will see children without um fathers and they're like, oh, ray, ray, ray. I know uh, more than one time in him calling out, but suddenly the girl them disappeared. Mm. And the man was willing. How old a child could be about, about now? I see. He's uh, about probably asking. about uh, I would say roughly 24. So a big, big somebody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Growing that long without knowing his dad, how who his dad is. <laughs> oh man, I don't know, man. And but... then we wonder how our our sons turn into crime and violence. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And all other kind of stuff happened to them. They have no relationship with their father. They don't have a man that's going to teach them how to become a man. You know, oh, and women, women will kill you, man, because they'll tell you about me can raise boy picnic. I don't care what y'all say. I'm, I'm raising some decent boy picnic. And you, you could tell a woman till you mouth dry and your tongue drop out that she has never walked the walk from a boy into manhood. And therefore, she cannot walk her son through that. And you know what I'm saying? She can try her best, but she can't walk him through that. And there's going to be something missing, especially if it's a boy. If it's a girl, she's going to have a lot missing too because she's going to have daddy complex, right? And she's going to go searching for that father figure somewhere, that fatherly love somewhere. If she never get the hug up on the, the squeeze up on the, you're beautiful, you're gorgeous, you're... I tell my daughter that every day. I can't imagine growing up as a girl and not having my dad to hug me and tell me that all the time to validate me. You know, you especially, you know, girls grow up with a whole lot of insecurities too. I know I'm rambling on, but it's so much information coming to my brain. I feel I need to dispense. Girls grow up with a lot of insecurities, right? And to hear you're beautiful, you're gorgeous and all that. My daughter is nine. My oldest daughter is nine, right? And for Father's Day, she wrote on her card. She says something. I say, oh, who tell her if you right? This. She says, you're the, oh, the first man. Um, I ever loved and will always love for the rest of my life and all this other stuff. And thank you for being a great dad. And even though I don't show it, she's nine. She's expressing herself. And I can't imagine being a girl growing up without all that, you know? So yeah, they could probably sp uh, spearhead their daughter into womanhood, but your son, you can't spearhead him into no manhood. That's why when they reach a certain age, they start butting heads with you like that and start rebelling. Because you're the power woman thing and you don't know how to access man thing and man thing in my look for like that how to become. You know, you know a part is missing when you're growing up. You're like, this ain't it. You say, I'm, I'm not into painting nails and and then they overcompensate. I see women abuse their sons all the time. Boof, buff, buff, or talk to them like, get up and move your ass cloth and go over this one. You're like, why is she so aggressive to that little boy? Because him not have no father right, and me have to teach him. my life story. Leave uh, that alone. I'm a life story. All right, yes. sir. Uh, so you see, <laughs> yeah. I asked a woman one time why she did that. And she said, he don't have no father. And me have to get him prepared for the world. Right? And the world now I'm going to be soft on him because he's a black man. And he's going to grow into a black man and all these things. I mean, I said to myself, said, damn, look at her overcompensating for, you know, trying to make him tough and ready for the world and her version of what she thinks a man should be kind of thing it's sad it's sad all the way around but you know some people don't listen and then the children them suffer so but every child deserves to know their father man every child deserves to know their father period and and to say you weren't rambling you're talking facts and See, the audience is really listening because my daughter, when she got into a relationship, mm -hmm. and the guy keep telling her, oh, you're beautiful, you're this, and that. My daughter looked at him and said, listen, I don't have no daddy issue. I need you to be a man like my dad. <laughs> and you're not stepping up to the plate. Mm. <laughs> so don't be telling me I'm beautiful oh. and this and that. I already have my dad for that. Ah, uh, see okay? that? Yeah. Be the man that daddy is. Be the provider. Right. Right. When I leave and I left the children with you, I don't want to come home from work and have to be looking after dinner for them. Hmm. You should make sure they were fed. Even if you don't cook for me, look after the children. Mm -hmm. Because that's what daddy did. Sin. My son, my ex-wife, mm -hmm. at one point she remarried and she called me and she said, come get your boys because I can't raise them. Mm. And the man that's in the house, he can't talk to them. Of because course. they're ready to fight him too. Of and course. he's like, yo, don't talk to me. My dad don't talk to me like that. Of course. Of course. You know, you're not my dad. I have my dad. <laughs> so she's like, come get the boys. And I think sometimes too, that's why women fracture the relationship between their children and the father when them get a new man. Because they know that once a child is tight with their real dad, there's going to be problems with your new man and stepdaddy that you putting into the picture. That man's going to have to, because them boys are going to act, especially boys especially boys, they're going to start buff up them chest on him. And it's going to be a delicate line he has to walk as a stepfather because he could only say so much and he could only do so much. If I film a picnic, we can grab him right up your so. Hey, boy, come here. 
Oh, yeah, talk to so. Eh? Who are you speaking to like that? Last time you had to grab him. Now, stepdaddy can't do that. Stepdaddy grab up my child like that. And my child is like, I'm telling my dad. Well, stepdaddy already know. Daddy, I'm mad, mad, somebody. So, you know, things, things <laughs> mash up. And the things mash up from that. So. But pick them no. Daddy don't. Yeah. So, you know, things <laughs> mash up from that. So, it's, it's a delicate situation, yeah, he tried right? to beat my kids. He tried to, he tried to hit my kids. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, like, yo, daddy don't beat me. How are you going to beat me? I'm trying to come thump out teeth and all that. You ain't putting no hands on my kids. I, I guarantee you <laughs> uh, some teeth are going to lose. Um, yo, well, I, I went over there and second they called police for me. Yeah, but he's doing what you have to do. <laughs> All right, hey, so Flo, I'm not. I know your audience are waiting for you. It's early in the morning still. You started a little late. Yeah, like you said, you wanted to start at six. Right. All right. All right. Keep Manners and respect, show. my brother. Keep up the good work, eh? All right. I appreciate you too. All right. God bless All you. All right. Man. Bless. Yeah. All right. Um. So here we go. Back into the material now. Yeah, man, Pickney deserve to know them father, man. You know, when we start these shows and we have a topic to talk about and all these things, we always end up with something that's not even on the list to talk about first. While we're at that, though, let's go ahead and just uh, give... Let's go ahead and give uh, Jack Cure's daughter a listen. Yo, for a, for a child this young to sing with so much emotions, her she's pulling... She's pulling this from somewhere. You don't sing like this. You know, I used to watch the singing show, and I remember this little girl came and she sing out her little heart and all the parts where she would hit her riff. And you know, the the judge said to the little girl, "The only thing is, because you got a beautiful voice and it's powerful. The only thing is, the parts where you're supposed to own it, like you've lived it and you've actually hurt." You've been in a relationship and broke up after you invested so much. You can't even access that yet because you're only, I think she was like eight or nine or something like that. And then the judge was like, it carries through in your music. We can feel it. But when you get older, after you've lived some, you know, a relationship that broke up or something is going to come through in your voice. So I'm watching Jack, your daughter sing. Y'all watch this. We have to share this. She look like him too much. Thank you. 
Camila McDonald on Instagram. Her mom's name is I am Camila K A M I L A McDonald M C D O N A L D. Follow Camila on Instagram. Um, this is where I got her daughter's picture from. You know, I'm gonna play with people picnic, so I don't really like using people's children image or whatever, but I just couldn't help this one because knowing who her father is. And you know the whole dynamics of what's going on right now with Jakura and he's not around and all these other stuff. And watching this little girl grow and then this piece of talent here. Whew, man, she her voice is powerful. Her voice is powerful. She have a beautiful voice. She has a beauty. May I feel I keep on I repeat myself? You know, when I first saw it, I started tearing up like I told you all. And even watching it now again. May I feel like, okay, so Flo, stop the, stop the foolishness. I went, which, part, which part tears I got? But damn, as a father, mm, as a father, watching her and say, and, and knowing where her daddy's at and all that, man, and knowing how close he was, because one thing about Jack, you know, him and that girl, him and him little girl, they tight in a man. They were tight. You know, they did all kinds of excursions together. Every time them step out together and go do them little thing, it was a movie. You understand? And he was really proud of his baby girl, and he used to show her off a lot. So to see her go from this little thing to this that quick and took the talent, because there's no denying that her father is talented. It's Jack Yor. No denying. So you watch how that talent went from daddy to daughter. Mm. But yeah, I just had to share that with y'all this morning, man. Uh, uplift your spirit a little bit. You know, there's even, and that's life for you. Because when negative is happening, positive is also always happening. You have to learn how to access the positive more than dwell within the negative and then enjoy life that way still. Because negative is going to be there regardless, you know, just but positive is happening too. So don't let the negative overshadow the positive that's happening in life. Access that positive as well and keep living. Right, Pauline Williams, life in balance, right? Some people feel like their life should all be positive and every day you're supposed to wake up and joyful and happy and everything is good and nothing ever goes wrong. That's not true. Life is full of ups and downs and turns and wild, crazy lefts and rights and unexpected events happening, a roller coaster of emotions and all these. You're gonna find something to be mad about that send you off your rockers. You're going to find something to cry about because it touches you so emotionally. You're going to find something to be angry about. You're human. You're going through all these experiences. That's life. That's life. See? Those are the laws of attraction. Odette says, for real, her grandparents must love her. Yeah, I don't know if y'all know who her grandparents are. Um, she She's from a prominent family. Anyways, Jack yours, um, well, they were married. Him and Camilla were married, but um, she's also from a prominent family as well. So they're not just any anybody. Uh, I should put that out there. That's why I said go over to Instagram. Follow her. You'll get to see because some people don't know like who the mom is, who her parents are, who her sister is, who, you know, she have her, her own whole. The mom has her whole own whole thing going on as well. She ain't just no, no, no. Somebody a pretty face with Jackie or Breeda or something It's a big story behind all that. But I'm more focused on the child and her talent. Definitely got that from her dad. And that cannot be denied. Right? Uh, Sophie McClark says, why is he asking for a DNA test? He can do the test without the drama. Just quietly take the child and get the test done. These men just love the drama. 
Yeah, Sophie, stop blaming the man. Um, most women, when you draw the child on one side and go do a DNA, we always see how that turn out. Why you took my child to go do a DNA without me knowing you're doing some kind of medical procedure or something with the picnic? Come on, man. A man is being upfront. And the man is like, yo, let's do a DNA test, make sure the child is mine, and then we move forward from here. If you're a woman that has nothing to hide, don't spin it around and talk about, well, you could have took the child and not have said nothing and just go and do it. Why add that to it? He came to you like a man. And y'all always trying to reduce men and re-engineer how they should approach. One of the most troubling kind of people to be around is people that focus more on how you said something and when it was said instead of being focused on what was exactly said. You know what I'm saying? He asked for a DNA. Just get that damn DNA done. Now make it go no further than that. And it done right there, so. See? You're going to be around 20-something years later telling your child, well, if your daddy really wanted one, he could have just took you. And he asked you. He asked you. You should have go with them. Right? I say, I know you have doubts in me and all that, but it's all good. I didn't do anything, and I'm telling you that that is your child. So let's go do the DNA together. We go. Boom. There it is. You satisfied now? It's yours. All right, now handle your responsibility like a man, and I shouldn't even have to tell you that. The end. See? <laughs> ah, ah, King Biggs, big up yourself. Um, let's go into let's go into Miss Kitty situation, cause that's right along the lines of this thing here. So shout out to Miss Kitty, my friend. Miss Kitty got married. Mm hmm Miss Kitty got married, and um, Miss Kitty bond some feelings when she get married to. Because it's the same tough footback. <laughs> Yo, they used to style Miss Kitty, you know. It's the same tough footback. Nobody not care about your accomplishments. Because no man know why you. All you accomplish, accomplish no man know why you. Yeah, let me tell you something, right? When Miss Kitty got my attention was when Miss Kitty said something about her paper plate. And she not feed no man off no glass plate and glass cup and um, cutleries and all these things. Fine china dining or nothing. She, in that same breath, she was also talking about how a woman give herself to a man. And she said, a lot of you give yourself to these men that you go through, and by the time you meet a husband, you've done everything in the book already. And Uno no says true. Uno no says true. Uno done everything in the book already. Hey, babe, I want to try this. Oh, no, that's nasty. But I love you so much, I'm going to try it for you. And then you try that. And then him broke up and gone. And then you try this. And then him broke up and gone. And then you try that. Miss Kitty said, no, nah, not even backers. Me not give no extra position. She said, ah, we're humans, right? And we have needs too. So not even little extra backers are nothing like that. Me not give you no extra nothing, right? And if you think about it, a backers is such a, like, I'm going to open out your body wall and look down in there, you know? A backers is like, are you get every man them thing there? Are you get every man headers? Him, him body in your throat back and uh, all these things. She came out the other day when some girl um, got on social media, said something about nine to five workers. And she was like, no, make no girl when I have no throat back. And throat back stab out. I <laughs> no have no. <laughs> no, make none of them girl that make you feel any less of a person. If, if, even if you work at KFC or pump gas at a gas station or if you're on, whatever you're doing, if you got your nine to five and you're not selling yourself and your soul and your body, then you know, hold your head high. Y'all are the ones who make society run and feel proud about yourself because the new generation, they're into this whole, oh, me? I don't work on no gas pump. Not say me a pretty girl, me a dolly, right? And, they, and another thing I love about Miss Kitty is this. I don't know if y'all heard, some guy where she apparently went on a couple of dates with her, used to date her or something. Him sound bitter. Him so, matter of fact, I, I have him right here. Him sound bitter, you know? One, him say, him carry out Miss Kitty on a date. And him said, may I tell you the truth? She had a two plate, she eat two plate. <laughs> the man said, she eat two plate of food and it just turned me off. She eat two plate of food and it just turned me off. Right? And then, <laughs> Listen, you see, different strokes for different folks. Because if, all right, so Shakira. Shakira is a foodie. And I, I'm a foodie, so me get to enjoy food with her. Even though me know sometimes, cause she have to stop me sometimes. Jesus Christ, yeah, it's too much. And you know, she used to try to do that a lot in the beginning too. You gotta watch your portions, babe, and all this stuff. Um, 
but it shows when you're not clicking with somebody. Because if me order two plates of food, you're supposed to be happy. You're supposed to say, well, that girl have an appetite, man. She can't eat, which means she's probably going to be, she's probably going to make sure it's a food in the house all the time. Not true? You come off from work and you stop. Your ribs are touch your back. And she over there talk about, I had a salad for dinner and I fixed you one and left it in the fridge. Hey, girl, I don't want no salad. I've been on the clock 16 hours. I want food. Which part the ox still there? I want some yam and banana, dashing, breadfruit, cocoa, you know, peel none of them, they nothing. Not sake and saltfish with little green banana, nothing, no my nails, and I can't peel bananas and all this. And you have to watch your figure and size. And, you know, we, we eat this kind of way. Move fry your song, go away. Me not in a that. Then me mother don't suck. I look like something wrong with me. Eh? Me need food. I need sustenance. So an average another man would have been happy for that. Oh, she have an appetite, man. That means I can yam too. I mean, if they act like, you know, you know what I'm going. And you must chew it twenty four times before you swallow. Me no want that. Me want your yam. Me want your lick all the juice after you. I don't have so. And Jesus Christ, this tastes good. And go back in again. Let me say yes. I mean, no, we're going to have fun with food now. But anyway, this is how many in I'm feelings. What I like about Miss Kitty is this, though. Miss Kitty is a good example of a woman to follow for our younger generation women. Here's why. Miss Kitty made a speech one time where she said, Manafi, you have to uh, have a certain standard about yourself, right? Certain amount of money have to run upon the date kind of thing. Like, you can't carry me go around a back a wall and them kind of something. And I'm, I'm worth more than that, right? Impress me a little bit, that kind of stuff. Show me I'm worth something a little bit. Now, here's the thing about that. In modern times, what these young ladies have, and some old foot are doing too, because they want to be young. But I, I not, re not realize, say, you know, them expiration date is clicking close by. But anyhow, uh, what, what modern young ladies have picked up is this a man must pay for everything from day one you must pay to date me you must pay for every date you must pay this and if i give you a little sex you're gonna pay extra you sell pum pum and you sell head and then she go on to that and if we end up together just know that you're paying all the bills and then them ask them so um what happens if you can't pay all the bills well, um, I guess I'll just have to find somebody that pays all the bills. That's not a woman. And I would tell my, my boys, that's not a woman that came to build with you. That's, that's a woman that came to use you as a stepping stone. You see, a lot of women are never tuned into that message until it's their brother or their own son. Then they're like, you know, I don't eat that. Y'all come take my son for fool. But you do the same thing to man, Right. So this kitty thing is compared to their thing, these modern day women want stuff that they themselves can't even afford for themselves. Imagine that. Imagine the audacity to demand things that you, your raw self, can't even afford for yourself. Your daddy never give you none of them things that you demand from me. You never elevate yourself to a position where you could actually afford these things for yourself even, but now the responsibility is on me. To get you all these things that you're into, move fry your song boy. Well, and the sad part is, we're not stupid. And I tell women this all the time. All that does, it make a man look upon any man with sense and any man work for what he has. Look at you, and he's gonna look at you and he's gonna say this. This is an inside man's thought. Listen up good. More look upon you, and he's gonna smile. And you're going to think it's a good smile. But I'll tell you what's going through his mind. But look, Panarto, how much boy I fucked that already for free? And she won't come sell me the same sum. Move your blood clot and go. Yeah, sell me when other man run through for free already. Hmm? So that means say you don't rape me then. You don't rape me. I, them get all that for free. Because everything else I know, me must pay and pay all the bills and do this and fix up that and that. That's why I tell the man them out there, you know. I said, if a girl never give a pick me, don't give her a dollar. You hear me? That is rule number one in a SoFlo TV book. We need to start with men's evening. Um, Stick to one of these names and carry it out. We have rules in the book. One of the rules is, if she ain't never gave you a seed, 
if she never carry your child in her womb, come on earth, don't get her a dollar. Yeah. It's, uh, sex is even exchange. Me have body, you have pum pum. Body go pum 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 and body meet. Everybody enjoy themselves. It's a good thing. Me now I'm buying no crutches for you. So why I try to sell me crutches for me? No, you get away for free already. Eh? <laughs> it's the good guys that get the shitty end of the stick. Oh, cause you. Oh, you want to stick around, Claffy? That one name for you, you know, we call it Claffy. Oh, you want to stick around, Claffy? You know how much man passed me up already? Break my heart, cheat for me, me have to left them. Oh, you want to stay around? You want to play husband? All right, then. I'm going to mash up your heart. I'm going to mash up your mind. All them boys that will hurt me, I'm going to lash you back for you. Half of them don't even know how to treat a good man. They don't know how to speak to a good man. They don't know how to treat a good man, but they want all these things. Now, when Miss Kitty come into it now, is I like the fact that Miss Kitty took her time and she grinded and Miss Kitty makes sure that she elevates herself to a position in life where anything she is demanding that her husband be able to afford for her, she can also afford that rotted for herself too, right? I'm telling you this. Men that can afford them things the way I ask for, those men actually want to see you be able to for yourself as well. Come with some kind of job. So come with some kind of um, ambition. And if you can't come with that, come with peace. At least come with peace. Then nowadays, woman ain't come with no peace. You don't see, the, you, you don't see how relationships short? Then no come with no peace. Oh, he better do this. And if he don't do that, I'm out of here. And it's on to the next one. And no peace, no daddy. Mr. Man, come home from work. Girl, have pizza pan stove. And she done yam off half or more than half of the pizza already. And left him two slices. And the man that they argue about, he been on the clock for 16 hours and I'm tired. And this is what you get for me. And then you ate all most of the pizza anyways. And she was like, well, that's what I got left. Um, If you want, order what you want. I'm like, damn. But I've been at work for you. Trying to make sure you have a comfortable life. Don't be a cluffy brother. But shout out to Miss Kitty. Kitty though. Shout out to Kitty. Put it down. I said this whole time, right? This is how you move in silence too. Everybody don't have to know your business. This is how Miss Kitty move in a silence. All when them a beat her and a talk, but nobody know why you. You you you. So what? You accomplish what? So what? Who cares? At the end of the day, no man know why you. Okay. She never breed for bicycle boy. <coughs> she never breed for broke dog man. When I have not a pot to piss in her window to throw it through. She never breed for Miss Waste man. She never breathed for somebody that craves public attention so much that he turns into community dick. She never breathed for none of them. And, and I remember her doing a speech one time and she said, I don't care what anybody want to say. I am not passing poverty down. I, this is a conscious decision. I'm not pass, passing poverty down. You know what poverty feel like? Why would I want to pass it forward? So I'm lining all my ducks up in a row. Miss Kitty work hard enough. I don't know if y'all know that. That woman that work hard, she there summer everywhere, right? Present up on big show. She there at this station. She's at that station. And at that show, she explained. She said, when I'm done with this one, me have to drive, go over, so cross town, figure do that one, then show up over here. So for that one, and not to mention, she graduated law school and passed the bar. And now she herself is an attorney. Not somebody who is still in school or I'm going to be an attorney one day. She quietly got herself through it and then show up and said, bam, you know, say I'm a lawyer too, right? Oh, oh, come on, man. Come on. So she, she's a good person to look at as an example. You know what I'm saying? And I respect her fully for that. Popular media personality, Kadeen Miss Kitty Hilton, has wed her longtime attorney at law boyfriend, Ian Wilkinson. Now, me not lie. When me first see the picture, I said, Miss Kitty married Raga Shanti. What? <laughs> Can, uh, tell me you don't look like Raga Shanti, y'all. When me first see it, me said, Miss Kitty married Raga Shanti. Oh, oh how long them deal with that? See? But it, him just look like, him, him look like Raga. Me not lie, him look like Raga Shanti for real. Hey, yo. <laughs> see? They're good. Uh, the couple tied the knot on Saturday, October 14th in Cooper's Hill, St. Andrew. And Miss Kitty, a versatile talent in broadcasting, recently joined the CVM TV 
as part of the network's revamped morning program as well, following her departure from Nationwide, where she served as the host of the Miss Kitty Live show for nine years. You know, and she also do these hostings for all these big events. She was on the Chris Brown show when he came to perform in Jamaica and many other big shows. Everybody know Miss Kitty and her um that in that light as well. She is also an attorney herself. Her husband is a King's Counsel. Wilkinson is also a senior partner in a law firm named Wilkinson's Law or Wilkinson Law. Right. So she never just throw out herself to any old Kuba Kuba and talk about oh me have husband. And what I like about her is this, right? This is the last one. I ain't gonna front. I see it all the time. These women be out here on um yes, thank you, Odette. It's impressive. So give her her flowers. We have a problem, like our people have a problem. When you do nothing impressive, it's like eh, sure, so and what, you know. And if you say nothing about it, I show off, yeah, I show off. Move on, go ahead. But give her her flowers. If I want my daughter to emulate anybody, may I go show her Miss Kitty and say, I go on like Miss Kitty here. Yeah, now any any boy I get any anything out of you and uh, all that. Right. But on top of that, though, Miss Kitty, King's Counsel, senior partner at a law firm, highly esteemed individual. And like I said before, he's not a one of them crave for attention kind of people here. The man, low-key, he's very well-known, he's highly respected in his field, and he's very low-key. What I like is this. I follow enough people, and I follow people because people follow me, and I feel like I'm not above anybody else. You know, like you follow some people, and them don't follow you back. You know, I try to follow back as many people as possible, see? Um, so I notice sometimes you go up on a profile, and the person... There with somebody and you know three months pass and you go back on a profile the card them left some kind of comment and um, specifically to you and when you go it's a new man the on the profile you notice that all the, the pictures gone of the last man where she did a exchange tongue within pictures and they're in mexico on a vacation and they're this and she's pregnant for him and now she has a baby and then next couple of months go down the road is a new man with 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 new baby from different man and then you go down the road a couple more months and the next, next new man again. And you have to say to yourself, say, how often do they switch partners? But it's not only how often they switch partners. If you're somebody that's going to switch partners so often, how about you just leave them off social media? Just leave them off of social media. Because me don't want to look at your profile every six months and see what a new man. It, it, it don't look good for you. But hey, it's your social media. You do what you want to do. Miss Kitty never come out and claim no man. She didn't. She quietly worked at what she was working at. And I'm sure she was like, when you're my husband, I will let the world know. But until then, see? So I think that's why now this brother here in him feelings because him never get show off. See? And because him never get show off, <laughs> him feel a kind of way. Here's one of his videos. Let, let me go play the two of them, you know. See, so see the first one here. Who I call me and I text me from all over the world. I tell me, say, my woman, Miss Kitty, I get married today. Like a drama. I am well aware that Miss Kitty is getting married. That's number one. Number two is that Miss Kitty is not my woman. At the time when I dated Miss Kitty, she didn't even know this man who she's getting married to today. Voice and Miss Kitty has threatened to sue me, and she has not sued me yet. Voice because she said I was telling lies on her. Mm -hmm. And it was this major big thing. Because you had a magazine who come out and say I'm a big liar, dance all magazine. Mm -hmm. Who I'm about to sue any minute now. Ross. Stay tuned and listen out for it. It's a suing man. I want to say, send my personal congratulations to Miss Kadeen Hilton. And uh, to let her know that I'm still waiting for her to come out and to tell the world that what I said wasn't a lie. I really took her out and she really had two plates of food <laughs> and it really turned me off. And it really turned me off. And I'm seeing the wedding pictures <laughs> and these are the wedding pictures and the, the invitation for the wedding. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not 
the least bit perturbed by it. So all who call me and I text me and I appear text and call me and get people telling that I've lost my baby. <laughs> Congrats, Miss Kitty. Wish you all the best. And Mr. Wilkinson. Congrats. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All the people in what call me. And I... <laughs> Yo, they want edit. <laughs> if edit with Pop and Jesus. Yo, he's a suing man. So, to me, no one get sued. And me, I talk about the man. I feel that it's only right that I play the man video so you hear from the horse's mouth straight, right? So, me now mix up in words, you hear what I have to say. Right, it, 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 me not like um big man. It, you do sound a bit uh hurt. <laughs> you sound a bit like it's. It, I don't know if you're probably thinking now, say you let a good one get through the gate. You know, a man I get older these days, and you know, it was time to like lock it in, and <laughs> you you make two plates of food stop you from greatness. I don't know. I don't know. But if if somebody is not your type, they're just not your type. Hey. He's saying what he has to say. Now, here's the second video. We have to play. And you hear a woman continuously say, you have to have money to get her. Mm -hmm. If you're broke, you can't look in her direction. You cannot get her without you spend how much, how much money on her. Right. And you are a man looking at this woman Seeing her Vicky. as wife material, and you dead by her side, mm -hmm. lie down in the bed with her, hug her up, go out with her, walk with her. And you know, say if you never have money, she wouldn't dead with you. Mm -hmm. You are go married to her, mm. you are go married to a woman who every day publicly in the public domain tell you that she's all about money and a woman who became an evangelist talking about no broke pocket man right now every woman at Jamaica are talking about them don't want a broke pocket man the person who is largely responsible for that is Miss Kitty Ross man <laughs> Miss Kitty is the one where I tell you man them say when you see broke pocket man you go over the other side remember you know? These women were talking about broke pocket man, you know. Them broke, you know. Yeah, true, true. Man, man, agree. Talk about a pot calling a kettle black. Oh. Who don't have money? Who don't want to talk about no one on a broke pocket man? Who don't have bomb a clock, bro? Who don't have money? Who don't have money? Who don't have money? Who don't a broke pocket man? <laughs> How can any man married to a woman who tell you what she's about mm. in the public domain, on the internet, it is all over? That this woman has repeatedly said that what she's about is money. When you're entering into a relationship, mm -hmm. it's about the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as far as I am concerned, Vicky. money and relationship, not for going at the same sentence. Because relationships, sexual, intimate relationships between a man and a woman. Can only involve money if it's a transactional relationship, meaning mm. if you are a prostitute, if you are a whore. Okay? God have mercy, man. Now, when the thing I got on, this is what I wrote. When the whole thing was going down, when I came out and I said, I went out on a date with Miss Kitty mm. and she two plates of food. Rough. And the whole place uproar in an uproar. Said, Me a mama, man. Me don't make that clear already. Me's a mama, man. Me's a Ma, me not only a mama man, me is a sissy, me is a mom parla. In fact, me got changed my name from no one, no one to be known as mama man. Because anytime you come out, oh, no, right, you start criticizing one. one. You're a mama man. Oh, no, you want right. to say you can't say nothing about man. Big and you're a mama man. Yo. Only when you talk about woman, you're a mama man. <laughs> because them, they are, the women, women oh. have set us up now in this society. There's no idea as woman. Set up the mm. thing now that man not to criticize them. Sure. When women are doing wrong, you can't come out and criticize them. Mm. If you criticize a woman, you are the devil. 
it means say you hate to man. Yeah, true. Remember, you know, woman can not call man junk up. Mm -hmm. Like how oh, Miss Kitty did up on the, on the internet. Let me not say the radio. Miss see up on the internet. Mm -hmm. I say, man, I duck him, man. Man feet out a paper. You can imagine if me go on the radio, go say, duck the girl. Duck him, man. Ross. The duck him, man, then man feet out a paper plate. And, <laughs> and man of you have 80,000. If you are a man, and you're here, up. <sighs> brother. All right. To, to me here, say is a suing man. Let me clear up with a disclaimer. Oh, man, okay. Let, let, let me clear up with a disclaimer. Um. Shout out to Azrakin eight seven six J A A S R O C K I N K Azrak Inc eight seven six under score J A on Instagram. Go follow him and get all of the things them he does. A lot of reaction videos where you see him there reacting as I can react to the the Maholi video over there on him channel on on his thing. Uh, <laughs> uh D Mac D Mac be a king, be a queen. No excuses are allowed. Shout out to you, uh King Biggs. Why? All right, let me let me let me just extend a word to this brother, right? Kaala, we are big people around here. Let me extend a word. Hold on, there. phone a ring, brother, brother. You could have simply done this. Congratulations. She's like, I would have said it. I would have said, congratulations. She wasn't my type. We tried dating. You know, not everybody is your type. We're just two different people. And there wasn't common ground enough for us to pursue the relationship any further. But all my congratulations to her. With all that set aside, she's a wonderful woman. And, you know, she has her king now. So the queen now has her king. And I wish them nothing but happiness. That and, and done it right there, sir. That's all you should have said. And done it right there, sir. But the things, the things that we are going with about two plates of food, and it's true, and it turns me off, and the pot calling the kettle black, and it, it just make you look like the fox that uh, could not get the damn grip them, and then him start to grip them sour, and him start cuss the grip them, dirty nasty grip them. Them probably sour anyway. Cause the facts that they are jump all day, I try to get the grip, you know. And they must say him out of water, and they must say, boy, them grip I look sweet. Mm -hmm. We can just catch one of them and him bunk off a tree and jump in at the ear and him try everything and just still couldn't get the grip. Then him start to talk about oh, the grip, them must be sour anyway. And them look nasty. And them <laughs> don't be the fox and the sour grape, bro. Just it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. One fly by you, and that's what <laughs> that's what it is. One flew by you, and that's what... By the way, you is a man who look like so you eat quite a, um, two plates of food, too. You don't look like you depend on diet neither, but um, you know why I call so, Mr. You said what you said, and then the, the audience will do what it has to do with that. Take a call here real quick. Hey, 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 Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Uh, you put that love, my friend. Why you have to go say? What? <laughs> it looks like I am the two plates of food. It, it don't look like no one plate of food, man. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yo, yo, brother, listen, man. All right, brother. <laughs> I, yo, yo, brother. The one look big. Yes, it look I like, yo, she's going to eat all the groceries. It really hurt him. The one hurt. Yo, yeah, him feel his hurt. Yeah, like you can tell. My mama, man, it might sound like a mama, man. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> it might say certain things when I see it, man. He so, did. You know what? He, he did. kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> All right, brother. It's not too much. <laughs> All right. My All right, man. Yo. <laughs> one say, you're not a one plate man. We can tell. You look like you go back for seconds all the time. So, you know. But, hey. I saw you go, yeah, man. So, you know, it, she wasn't for you. That's all. And somebody found her. And she found somebody that was for her. And she's now living her best life. More power to them. I'll just extend my congratulations to Miss Kitty and to her highly esteemed now husband, not boyfriend. Not, <laughs> yeah. Big up yourself, Miss Kitty, and continue to do great things and continue to shine as an example and stand on your word and accomplish and live by those words, right? Young ladies out here are watching. Who want a good example? You know how they always say, well, you know, there are no good examples around for people to follow. I lie. I lie. I'm starting to realize that people follow what they want to follow. 
some girls are going to follow um, Love and Hip Hop and be those women that are in Love and Hip Hop or in one of those shows where them fling drinks and flip table and, <laughs> and all that and toxic past and toxic present. And then some girls are going to follow people like Miss Kitty. So there are young ladies out here who are following you and are looking up to you as an example. And there are men out here too who admire uh, your strength and what you do. So big up to Miss Kitty for that. Right, and the, the, the haters are silent. <laughs> they, they, them don't have nothing to say now. They don't have a damn thing to say now. Well, you used to tell a woman, oh, no man, no one, tar and her foot back tough and her body look like it. Yeah, you wanna see it now? Well, you can imagine what that household might look like. <laughs> Somebody said, if you don't, if you pay close attention, you can actually see that Miss Kitty is actually pregnant. I don't know. I won't go that far as to say that she is. But me, if she is, then congratulations to them on that too. But at the end of the day, do your thing. Do your thing. We salute you. All right? Moving right along. <laughs> Jaja God. Hey, I'm afraid, you know. I'm afraid because the man call himself all kind of near me. Say, my mom, my man. He might this, that, and the other. So here's what I'm going to say to you, sir. If you feel in any way offended and you feel like so flow. I don't know why you have my image up by your show. I yeah, laugh, laugh, and talk. Cause some people get real petty like that. Um, just extend a word, soflowtv at gmail.com. I will edit the video, and I will take you right out of it. Okay? Just understand, say, a lot of other people have it as well circulating, and they've seen it as well, so I know me. Right? <laughs> and on top of that, um, yeah, he did say, to his credit... He echoed some of the things that I said as well. So I know he wasn't saying all lies. It was just that his timing was off. Now was not the time to come talk about them yellow one man we have money. And now in Jamaica, that's all the woman them are talk about. Him have to have money and him have to pay all the bills and me mustn't pay nothing and all this. This is some trend that's going on. And I said I admire Miss Kitty because she put herself in a position in life where if she's demanding things from her husband, if she should then those are things, or a man, then those are things that she can also actually afford for herself. But I've noticed that majority of the women that demand certain things and a certain level of lifestyle from men, they themselves can't afford that for themselves. You know what I'm saying? So he did say some stuff that made sense. It's just the timing of it was off, my brother. And it came off looking like you were bitter. And especially when, you know, <laughs> when him end the first video there, and white nose and um invite sink and change like you felt that you felt that lost a good one wasn't for you it is what it is all right now move on to the next topic now let's go into this philip paulwell something here. i think it's the right time now we have enough people here to go into the philip paulwell situation seeing tracy and turner says true a true thing you are saying <laughs> oh uh audrey shaw says Good morning, everyone. I want to see what L.A. Lewis have to say now about Miss Kitty. Congratulations to her and her husband. Yeah. I will hear people talk about her, man, and talk all kind of derogatory things about her. But she never let it sway her, though. And she never publicized what she was doing. When Miss Kitty came out and announced that she is done with law school, and she passed bar, and she's officially an attorney, not far we never know that she was, go she was studying law. She we just heard her talking about, girl, if you have high ambition, and aspire to be this and must strive for greatness and all this. And people are saying, all the talk she attack, we don't see her do nothing. Quietly underneath, she busting her brain, right? She doing her studies. She she say, I oh, gotta bring her through it. Cause how she juggle these jobs that she have, and that, and you know, law school is not no easy feat. So shout out to her again and again and again. Big up to them, right? Now. Let's get into the Leota Bradshaw story. You know, I could talk about Philip Paulwell and his thing last. Um, she was saying in the second video that was a long time. When a man offer me wine and massage, I can't buy my own wine and pay my pay for massage. <laughs> it must be come better than that, uh, Vicky. Wine and massage. Well, usually when we offer wine and massage, it's two kind of wine we're offering. I'm just saying. 
we're, we we usually offering two kinds of wine when we offer wine and massage. We're hoping you drink up all of the wine. Drink up, drink up, and get very inebriated or start feeling sexy. Because wine have a way of having women feel very sexy. And it just takes like one glass of a strong red wine, 12% or better. <coughs> Talk me later. And, you know, then things can happen. She gets a bit loose and she is not so um, inhibited anymore. So she start let her guard down and, you know, touching go on and next thing go on and then massage lead to... Yeah, yeah, we are big people. We can talk. Anyhow, let's go over here, sir. Leota Bradshaw allegedly paid hitmen $100,000 to abduct and murder the mother and the child of, um, you know, this is Philip Paulwell's 10-month-old child. We are switch gear you now. Seeing King Big says, yes, facts. <laughs> <laughs> on that stage, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, but that's true. When we're off, don't go out there and be naive. When that man is offering wine and massage, he's offering two wines. Don't be naive. Unless you do want the wine too. Because you know what I notice about women? Them usually like to have something to blame something on. Yeah. She do want to give you something know. But she's going to blame me for how you trick me with the wine and the massage. And next thing me know, we went from massaging to hunching. But you wanted to give it up too. So I don't know play that naive something there with me. We are big people. We know how the thing go. 10-month-old Soraya Paulwell and her mother, 27-year-old Tashina Patterson, were allegedly kidnapped and shot and killed on Saturday, September 9th this year. And that happened to them, you know? Shot and killed. Who the hell shoots a 10-month-old baby? Who shoots a 10-month-old baby? God, man. So, she, the price alone. Y'all remember, let, let me go through this first. Their bodies were then burnt the same day. This is what has been let out. They were shot. They were kidnapped, shot, and killed. And their bodies were burnt the same day. That disclosure was made by the Crown in the Home Circuit Court on Friday. Soraya is the daughter of the MP for East Kingston and Port, and Port Royal, prominent politician Philip Paulwell. The woman suspected of masterminding this ghastly act, Leota Bradshaw, she also shares a child with Paulwell as well. Miss Bradshaw has been indicted on eight charges, including kidnapping and capital murder. Robian Williams was in the court, and Robian Williams brought back information to nationwide radio jm.com you can go over to them they also have other news stuff that is accurate one of the trusted sources leota bradshaw arrived in court wearing two masks i don't know if y'all saw her how when she didn't leave the court right she have on two masks two covid masks one day over her mouth and nose and one day over her forehead and only her eyes were only, only her eyes were showing through the mask Right? She arrived in court just the same. Two masks covering her mouth and covering her forehead. She's trying to conceal her identity now. The other, one covered her nose and mouth, the other covered her forehead. Now, after settling into the dock, she removed both of the masks, revealing her face in the courtroom. You know, some of you like said them kind of case here should be shown on TVJ, CVM kind of thing. Make it public. Make, make the case public so the people them can't see. Anyhow, she wore a flared dress and some slippers. She sat and she listened attentively as the prosecutor outlined all the allegations against her and her cousin, Roland Balfour. You know, me, I said to myself, say, um, I may I talk to Shakira. Shakira actually did a video on her channel yesterday. So go over to Shakira Sphere um, and check out that video that she did. It's a bit more in-depth and her own perception of it as well. But we have said to ourselves, um, then you have caused a thing to do and a stupid idea. None of them talked you out of this. The whole of them say, yes, make we do it. That's crazy. And I told y'all this before. A guy did an experiment in Jamaica where he had a person in a bag, right? And the person, the bag, one big crocus bag. And him stop a roadside. 
I don't know if y'all seen the video. And he's just pulling up random people that pull where we drive taxi and have them car and stuff. And it was crazy to see the amount of people who were willing to take a small amount of money to help him get this body to somewhere. This is a social experiment that was done in Jamaica by somebody. And, and, and I watched the video and I think it's only one man out of the whole of the video them. There's only one man say, whoa, wait, wait. Why not the bag? Because the bugger jump up and down in the trunk. And him said, no worry about the man. Me give you extra money for him. He said, no, 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 no. Pull over him car, open the trunk. Him said, brother, somebody in the bag. Take this out of my car. Me know, in them something here. One person. Everybody else. All right, you have to go up the money, you know. Up the money a little bit more. I said, damn. And that's some small money. Some small money. Bradshaw allegedly reached out to the deceased woman, Miss Patterson, on Facebook on September 5th, where she told her that, hello, yes, I am the wife of Mr. Philip Paulwell, and I'm, I have word that you have a baby for my husband. Remember, I know. Imanda woman is not married, you know. This, after she reportedly learned about the existence of the baby, the Crown alleges that Bradshaw advised Miss Patterson that we're going to have to do a DNA test to determine if my husband is actually the child's father. She said, okay. And then after she tell her, okay, they had a brief exchange of words and she blocked her. She was still coming at her with more stuff. So she blocked her upon Facebook, right? So when the girl called me for every minute I come talk about she and wife and the block her, right? She block her upon the fifth. She was on a plane to Jamaica on the sixth. Oh, you block me. This is the only way she had to get in touch with her. She couldn't reach her, right? So she said, Oh, you block me. So she buy a plane ticket and everything. I'm heading to Jamaica. The Crown now alleges that Bradshaw, who is a US resident, traveling to Jamaica on September 6th, she traveled for the sole purpose of killing Miss Patterson and that baby. A plan was allegedly hatched with Balfour, her cousin, and two other men, Richard Brown and Roshane Miller, to kidnap the mother and the daughter. For the execution of the plan, they were reportedly paid 100,000 Jamaican dollars initially. And not 100,000 Jamaican dollars each, 100,000 Jamaican dollars split up for three people because she is the fourth person, right? So three man, I got split up 655 US dollars. So you see, when I told you all that life is cheap in Jamaica, one time, you know, when I first started this channel, I used to be into loose talk with people, right? So people used to say stuff like, yo, when I see you, I bust out your head back and you can't come back to Jamaica and nothing like that. I mean, used to say stuff like, I'll put 10,000 US dollars on your head and have somebody wipe your ass out. You can't make me scared to come back to Jamaica. That's why you have to hide when you send certain comments to me. Because I'm not play them game then. If you make me feel threatened, I'm not running away from Jamaica. I'll come there and make sure, say, you're not dead no more. I used to talk like that, right? One day I leave a comment where I said 10,000 US and somebody says, so flow. 10,000 US? You must say, well, I'll wipe out a whole family of 12 or something. And it stuck with me. It stunned me. And I thought, a whole family of 12 or something for 10 grand? You're a joke, you make. Maybe you mean 100,000 US. He said, no. He said, matter of fact, so flow, listen. Um, if you come up with 500 US, you see? Boy, that's way. 250. Boy, that's way. I said, stop lying. Ain't nobody killing nobody for no 250 US. Well, see there? See there? You see this? Somewhere in these grown-ass men's mind, they thought it was okay to kidnap a woman and her 10-month-old child, shoot them, murder them, burn them for 650 US dollars that they're gonna have to split three ways. That's 200 and something dollars a piece. And from all we've heard, they're all professionals. They all have their career fields that they're in. So they're working and earning above minimum wage. 
and them are going to dash where a woman. When I look at that baby now, and then I think of what happened to that baby. Imagine, you know, your baby, you know, you don't know what's going around, you know. So, mommy, I carry you over here. You don't know mommy carrying you to your death. Mommy is being kidnapped and you, mommy will probably will try to make the baby not feel the discomfort and all that um, that's going on. She probably will beg, okay, do something to me, but leave the baby. And then make up their mind so they will kill a baby. $100,000 US dollars is what she paid them. That's the initial down payment. She was supposed to pay them $500,000 US dollars. So if $100,000 US dollars... It's 650 um, American dollars. That's 650 times four. So she had to go at 2,400. Just got 2,450, 2,500 US dollars to kidnap and murder a 10-month-old child and her mom and dispose of them in this manner with 2,500. No, 500,000 Jamaican dollars, Shamar. You know, hear me. 500,000 Jamaican dollars. 2,400 and something US dollars. And they took it. And she already paid them 600 and something US, which is 100,000. That's her initial down payment was already made. The remainder of the funds, another 400,000 Jamaican dollars, was to be paid after the completion of the plan. That was the plan. You know, I saw her lawyers, I think she has two female attorneys, and I saw her attorneys saying something about they're very concerned about um, the conversation that is surrounding this case in social media world and online and how people are, are perceiving or, or how people are dragging it and what people are at adding their own. Oh, no, move on, go man. Uh, because they don't have nothing. What happens in a court of law and we're not there is not affected by our opinions out here. We are going to talk. You can never stop the public from speaking, especially about something like this that is such a ghastly act. So the first thing they I notice they always try to do is I'm going to sue people. And then them say, I'm going to um, quiet you. Right? They try to quiet you so there's no conversation. Because when the conversation ends, then they can quietly go into a verdict that is not just. Now, mind you, we're taking this to cover ourselves. We only go by as news is put out through trusted sources out of Jamaica that has stood the test of time and um, law enforcement officials. So we're not making up and adding anything to this. This, this is not one of those channels. We don't go around saying, yeah, man, I did film care, you know. I mean, feel like I said Philip D. involved, you know. If I say that, that's when I get to the point where I say to my audience, this is my personal belief. I feel like at some point, Philip Paulwell actually figured out that, oh, shit, that's exactly what happened. Do I think that he is a part of it at any level? Stick around. Let me finish through with this. So on the day of the kidnapping now, now during the during the night of September 6th, this is when she fly in a Jamaica upon the 6th, you know, and this get executed the same day she fly in allegedly, which means she came for business. She came for business. Veronica Gale says, so Flo, explain what taken mean. Uh, what do you mean? Explain what taken means. Now, during the night of September 6th, this is when she just landed in Jamaica, the men allegedly went, they scoped out the area where Miss Patterson lived. Poor woman never know. They don't even know. They scoping you. They planning, they plotting. She on the island. On the day of the kidnapping, Miss Bradshaw presumably made several phone calls and conversed with Miss Patterson. Miss sure Miss Patterson has some black harp on Facebook. How she have my number now? Right. How she get her number? Because she blocked her on Facebook. When she come and talk about DNA, right? Allegedly. Now, on the day of the kidnapping, Miss Bradshaw presumably made several phone calls to her and conversed with Miss Patterson with a view to lower her away. 
According to the Crown, evidentiary material shows that Miss Patterson and Soraya, the little girl and her mom, shows them exiting their home and it shows them entering an SUV that was parked at their gate. They, I don't know if it's video evidence them have of them leaving the house and going to the gate to the vehicle, the SUV. They allegedly remained. This has to be video evidence because they even have a timeline of how long they stayed there in that vehicle before the vehicle drive off. So they allegedly remained in the vehicle for 15 minutes right there. Miss Patterson and her daughter never exited that vehicle. They were reportedly taken to the hills above Rolling Town, Rolling Town Town, rather, sorry. And then they were shot and killed and their bodies were burnt. The police are subsequently led to the presumed crime scene where burnt remains were discovered. Dried bones and blood were also found in the vicinity. Now, as the Crown laid out the accusations today, Bradshaw, she sat in court in the docks. She wore a distraught look on her face. Reality is hitting home now. When leaving the court building, she darted back inside upon seeing a television camera that was perched outside waiting for her. She was coaxed. I saw the video and there was a lady who, she ran, go back inside. The lady looked around and, oh, she gone back in. And then the lady went over there and said, come, come on, come, come on. She then left the building walking briskly with the two masks on her face, same way, over her mouth and nose. And one panar farid. Don't want to be seen. Only her eyes were showing. Now, Philip Paulwell has since, because everybody has said, well, um, Mr. Big Man, how come you don't have nothing to say and been quiet for so long? I want you all to remember something. Philip Paulwell himself is an attorney. He himself is an attorney. So he knows the law inside out. He knows that, you know, I can say things that could end up coming back to bite me. He knows to stay put. The less I say, the less I will have a chance of incriminating myself. And I told my audience before, I said, think outside the box. Because any woman were bitter, she can probably look and say, listen, are you, are your 61 year old body put me in another situation? Yeah, so here what? The two are we going down. So when I go to court, this is what happened, Your Honor. No want the truth. The truth is, me and Philip planned this. He might go on like he's not a part of it, but he is. Okay? But I know y'all are going to try to save him because he's some big politician. But he was a part of this too. We weren't supposed to get caught. Anyhow, she says that whether it's true or a lie, it's a wrap. I want y'all to pay attention to the YNW Melly murder trial that's going on right now. The lead prosecutor in that trial was removed. From the trial. Why? Because YNW Melly's attorneys brought up an accusation. And the accusation is that the lead prosecutor in that case is a liar. And he's known for lying while gathering evidence to make a case. And how that bring the lead prosecutor in now? Because their plan is to get rid of her. Once you get rid of a lead prosecutor, you throw a case into a tailspin. Because this is a case that she had tried already. She studied this case. She knows all the evidence inside and out. She knows what slide goes next. All this. Somebody else, another prosecutor, is now going to have to take this case over, study this whole case, and hopefully they can deliver it in court with such confidence that they can convince a jury that he's guilty. His attorneys weren't no dummy. Their goal was to get her kicked off of it. So what they said was, hmm. She knew that that detective was lying. She went into court and she says, Your Honor, he wasn't lying. But guess what the judge did? The judge said, if there's even a small possibility, the judge says, I didn't find any wrongdoing with her in the case. But if there's even a small possibility, then she should not be the lead prosecutor of this case. And just like that, she's off the damn case. Right. So, Paulwell knows the law. 
So when people are saying, well, him stay quiet for too long, how come him not say, and then this are all him come out, come say, him should have said more. That man ain't thinking like you. You're not an attorney. You didn't go to law school and study the law and pass bar and try cases over the years and all these things. He knows why he's staying quiet. He knows why he's staying quiet. Mm. Now, the opposition parliamentarian, Philip Paulwell, is hoping that all who were involved in the kidnapping and the murder of his 10-month-old daughter and her mother are brought to justice and punished to the fullest extent of the law. In a statement that was issued on Sunday, on, I mean on Saturday, sorry, Paulwell said that nothing could have prepared him for these events that unfolded since last week, Thursday, when the police here charged Leota Bradshaw, who is a Navy, U.S. Navy petty officer, with whom Paulwell has been with now and shares an eight-year-old child together, along with three other men in the abduction and murder of his daughter, Soraya, and her mother, Tashina Patterson. Quote, unquote, he said, the past few weeks have been extremely difficult for me as I grappled with the abduction of my daughter and her mother. The Member of Parliament for Kingston and Port Royal released this statement, further saying, I am heartbroken that this is like the worst thing that has happened. He said, I prayed unceasingly for their safe return. God, please bring them back. Please, please. Right? That anyone could murder a mother and an innocent baby is unimaginable. And my heart is heavy with sadness, he said. Now, um, I don't want to really pick his words apart, but you are a prominent politician in murder capital, Jamaica. So you know that people murder mother and picnic all the time. So for you to say that that anyone could murder a mother and an innocent baby is unimaginable. Come on, man. We've seen we've seen many of these cases. Them kicking the door and kill the granny and our tree grand picnic them and all these things. You, you're not you, you're not new to this, right? But I understand that you have to put the words together properly for media, right? And uh, try to not incriminate yourself in any way possible. So the message has to have remorse and hurt and all these things. He said that anyone. Could murder a mother and an innocent baby is unimaginable, and my heart is heavy with sadness. I'm praying for Tashina's family, who I know are experiencing the unbearable grief and pain of losing their beloved daughter and granddaughter. As a human being, father, and a lawyer, and a legislator, I am hoping that all who are involved are brought to justice and punished to the fullest extent of the law. Powell said that he has been in constant dialogue with the police and has cooperated fully every step of this investigation. He never hold nothing back. He didn't hide anything. He didn't say I didn't know nothing. He's been in constant dialogue with them and he has worked. He's given them everything they've asked of him. I cannot comment on the investigation nor the matters before the court, but I wish to thank the police for their tireless work. He expressed some gratitude towards the many Jamaicans who have been generous in their prayers as well as their kind and thoughtful expressions of love and support and solidarity for him and his family. Last Friday, Bradshaw appeared in the Supreme Court after being charged with two counts of conspiracy to kidnapping, two counts of conspiracy to murder, two counts of kidnapping, and two counts of capital murder. Those are her six charges just laid out before you, right? And we already explained, we already went through how all that happened according to the Crown. She flew into Jamaica. She was talking to the woman on the 5th. She found her on Facebook. She confronted her about it. She the lady blocked her. She was in Jamaica by the 6th. Now, ask me, Soflo, you think Paul will know more? Than him did I say? This is what I'm going to say. Paul, well, let me be careful how I say this to you. But let me say it to you anyway. So we don't get we in our trouble. I believe, I believe, nowhere am I saying this is factual. They have proof of anything of this. I'm saying this is my personal belief. 
I believe that he was not a part of the initial plan, but at some point, some point, it dawned on him. You know when you get that oh shit moment? I think he got that oh shit moment way before this whole investigation was finalized. Uh, Dantonette Taylor obviously wants to argue with somebody, so she called me biased. And I said, just because Paul Well is a politician, he's a human being too. The woman became obsessed with the girl and her baby since she found out about the baby in May this year. What am I being biased about? What are you talking about? I never said he was guilty. I never said he was a part of planning this. So why are you calling me biased? Some of you need to learn for listening up. Some of you have, and I'm not mad at you because not everybody has good listening comprehension skills. It's the ability to listen and to sort out what you heard while you were listening. You know, some people, you talk to them and you say, the monkey ran up the tree and came back down. They heard the monkey burn up the tree and then run around the town. So I'm not responsible for your listening comprehension skills. At no point did I say he was a part. Matter of fact, I've clearly said I do not think that he is a part of the initial planning stage. Where am I drawing my where am I drawing this from to speak on this? I'm drawing this from having a wife of my own and 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 putting myself in that place. My wife can only move funny for so long before me start to say, mm, something all right. Uh, I wonder what I'm going because you're flying on the island. You never tell me, say, you did not come. You end up taking me weekly. You're going over there, so we did. You did not make some moves where I'm very questionable about. And we just clash over the side, baby, where you just find out about blah, blah, blah. All the other, add up, add up one and two. Right? Right. So I'm saying... She might have called and said, um, hey, honey, you know, I'm taking leave. I'm going to be in Jamaica for like a week or so, blah, blah. And it, that's something where them normally do. So she's like, okay, I'm flying in. I've been in the military. I did a lot of years in the military. I know that you can't just get up and go when you feel like it, when you're in the military in the U.S. You have to apply for leave. It has to be approved or it has to be like emergency leave and it still has to be approved and all that. So how she was able to just get away so... And us come in, so the part that got me is when all this started blowing up, and her statement was made public. If you go back and watch my first video, I said she's not even in Jamaica, she's in the US, so obviously, she's not the one that did it. Lo and behold, she was in Jamaica. And Mr. Paul well knew that she was in Jamaica while other people were saying she wasn't in Jamaica. So I'm telling you that at some point, he must have said, oh, hold up. Yo, nah, damn. That's the oh shit moment. That's the oh shit moment. And yes, I'm very aware that he's a father too. And he lost his child. To be honest with you, he seems like he loves the little girl. The man never questioned about no DNA until she brought up question about DNA. And I said this before, again, in videos before. I said, if you have a, a child with a man, dispute a DNA is between the mother and the man. No third party should be coming in demanding a DNA test. So obviously, this mother... Already work out them fine details there with Paulwell. And he already knows and accepts that this is my child. Right? So, of course, our father got hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt to see what happened to his child. And he wasn't a part of the initial planning of it all. But somewhere along the line, it started to dawn on him. Like he said, right? He was in touch with the police all along and he was working with the police all along. Maybe it was his own words to the police that kind of led them in a direction to where they started to discover stuff, right? To zero in on a certain individual. Because he's probably saying, uh, but you know, 
You know, so she come in. You know, so she fly in on the sixth. You know, so one of the vehicles was missing from the house. Look in the video and see if you see the video, the vehicle, if it look like and Oh, that's one of the vehicles them from up on my yard. This, that, and the other. We don't know. I'm just saying behind the scenes, what's going on? This would be his stage of where he it starts to dawn on him. Like, oh shit, this not look good. This is where you're gonna call your woman and ask her. Me, I said, babe, come here. You have nothing to do with the baby disappearing and our mother. And if she goes, me, no, sir. Did you ever meet up with her or talk to her or anything? And she's trying to hide it from you. And she goes, no. I mean, I text, uh, I text her on Facebook and then she blocked me. But that's about it. I mentioned DNA and she blocked me. Obviously, she's scared to get a DNA. You know, no do already, right? Obviously, she's scared to get a DNA. Probably along those lines of the conversation. And then police bring to him, if there's a video out there, how would they know that they sat in the vehicle outside of the her residence for 15 minutes in the vehicle and the, the, the mother and the child never exited that vehicle and then the vehicle drove off? How would they know? Obviously, somebody have some video or something around the place, right? Right. So now, when the police show him, I'm saying, Mr. Paulwell, you own a vehicle like this? And him said, blood clot. I mean, I mean, um, I, I want my vehicle them. But me asked her, and she said she don't know. And she had the only person who would attack the vehicle. And that is outside of the gate of the... You see what I'm saying? So now it's dawning on him. This is not accusing him. This is me telling you how it start add up for him. And now he has to deal with the reality of that. And he's like, oh, damn. And she a liar and I said, no, Sam, I never talked to her. Did you go over where she live at? No, Sam, I never go over where she live. How the hell my vehicle got over there? But he probably never say all that and just said to the police, say, listen, ah, hmm. oh, this is a rough one for me, boy, because you know me feel so so also have something, Leo, I have something to do with this, you know. Yeah. And that's where he comes in. That's my whole say of what I think happened with this situation how does she know where the girl live well how did she get the girl's number that's another question i was asking because she would have contacted her directly by call right instead of contacting her on facebook and it said that when she contacted her on facebook on the fifth is when she mentioned dna half a go run to make sure say my husband picked me that and the girl blocked her and it infuriated her. And she booked a flight to Jamaica and was in Jamaica by the 6th. The 5th, blocked by Facebook, the 6th in Jamaica. You understand? So we can ask those questions. How did she get this woman's address? How did she get her phone number? How did she, get, you know what I'm saying? You can always find people on Instagram and Facebook and wherever else. You, you, I trail you. And then I look who your friends are. And lo and behold, there goes your mama. And then there goes your daddy. And there goes your sister and your brother. You know, you can't always find people like that. That's what law enforcement does. Law enforcement, by the way, when they're looking for you, they don't just go look for your profile. Let me find SoFlo TV and see if he is on here. No, they'll do that. But if I'm on the run, they're like, where's the most likely place that he would go? Most people go to somebody that they can trust, somebody that's going to hide them, somebody that has their best interests at heart, even though they might be guilty. That could be a sister, a brother, a mother, that kind of stuff. So dig up his profile. Okay, look and see who is attached to him. Boom. There goes his sister right here. Now go through hers. And they go through it. Oh, there goes their pictures, them growing up together, last birthday celebration. Ooh, that, that looks like their mom. Okay, facial recognition, that person put that back in there. Boom, there goes her profile. She's attached to him too. That is his mom. Okay, now we're going to look for where mother lives, where his sister lives. Now we're going to stake out the mom's home and the sister's home. I'm just telling you how they work. Right? We're in our web, you know. <laughs> we're in a web called the internet. But for the fact that she blocked her and she couldn't get access to our dear. And she needed immediate access to say everything I wanted to say. Oh, this bitch blocked me. Oh, okay. 
So you know what? And I told you before in the beginning of the show, when a woman look and see the side picnic, they look just like, especially if she have a child for the man and for her child don't look like the man. Because you know, sometimes children take on their mom's look more than their dad's look, right? So if you're looking at your child and your child don't look nothing like the father, it look like you. But the side woman go have picnic with him and that picnic they splitting image of him. I bet no blood clot. Yo, more kill the girl. Um, round up the troops. What I'm perturbed about is three grown ass men were around her, and none of them could have said, you know, say a foolishness I deal with. No, <laughs> no, yo, take that out of your head. None, none of you could have said, take that out of your head, a foolishness I deal with. And then look on the money. I mean, goddamn man, you're gonna kill people. But look on the money. Oh, what kind of money that? What can, I don't know if shout out to my Jamaican people who are in Jamaica living. But may I talk about them far in a year where I haven't been back to Jamaica in a while. Oh no, no, say um 200 and something US dollars in Jamaica can't go far, you know. I don't know if y'all don't know this or not, but 200 and something US dollars in Jamaica, it done like this. It done like this. So you're gonna take a life. And kill an innocent child. For what? That could bring you on probably two dates if you're a dating person. Groceries for one week. That's it. And you murder people them for that. Um, yeah, I'm hoping for the same thing that Philip Paulwell is hoping for. And is that they are punished to the fullest extent of the law. But hear this. Me know how Jamaica go with the justice system. I showed y'all just the other day how Andre Blackman Bryan and never came out and said he is the leader of the clans, clansman one dan gang. Why? Because me not in a gunman and badman business and I don't know nothing about them. Because me like walk around with my face out of road, right? So only when time it's said and admitted by them, then you will hear me repeat. So for a man that's accused of five, six murders and came and admitted in court that I gave the order for each and every one of them so they followed me and my orders, how him end up with the same time as Vibes Cartel and Vibes Cartel have one murder? You see what I'm saying? The justice system in Jamaica works weird. We don't know how. Like, right now, this is a good segue to go right into Beachy Style trial and the latest accusations or the latest testimonies from the Beachy Style trial. I'm segueing into that to show you this. Remember, I know. I said, there's no way that Bubbler can confess to how them cut Tanya throat and stab up her chest 10 times and set her on fire and all these things. And I stayed there and watch and make sure Sam do it the right way, just like the boss Sam did want it done. And you end up with 19 years and you must only do 10 before you're eligible for parole. Me say, they used that testimony so they can use it to sink Beachy. But but watch how this turn around in the court and start to look like, say, mm -mm, you do this by your own, Mr. Bubbler. You did have a vendetta for the woman. Somebody pay you to come sign up this good businessman name. Watch. Watch and see. So with that said, now that we know what happened to that little girl and her mom, I still can't say rest in peace. I still can't say rest in peace until I see what justice is served. And I'm sure they're not resting in peace. Them spirit, they're uneasy. My condolences goes out though to Mr. Paulwell. Because as a father like myself, I will love my daughter them a certain kind of way. I can only be empathetic. And think that that man is hurting from a different level. I'm sure he thought the day was going to come where he was going to unite his two girls. 
Any woman have picked for me, you know? Me, me. Me make them know, say, listen. Um, my kids, them have to know each other. That means say, me not hide none of my picnic them. So if I broke up relationship, I forgot broke up and all that, then I said, so be it. But the picnic them have to know each other. I'm not having no kid round a side round there, so and them have to hide them whole life and all that. I'm sure Philip Powell was of the same mind frame. Like my kids, I can't wait to unite my two daughters. A father with two daughters, yo, guns out. Clip loaded. Everything on deck, right? Because it's girls. Men go extra for their girls. If you're a loving, caring father, you know this come naturally. You got extra for your girls. So that man is hurting right now. He's hurting deep right now. And because he is a public figure, him, him can't even grieve like all the rest of we can grieve. And there's so much speculation surrounding this case and how much he might have known. And you know, our people, a lot of them don't like the, the true story. They like a sensationalized version of the story. This is why the sensationalized version sells more, right? So even when them can't show you step by step, say, that man was never involved. That man was here. He was there. He wasn't into this and did that. Everything leads to him not being in. It's just like this. The Donnelly Donaldson, we bring up these names because we don't want these people to be forgotten. It's just like the Donnelly Donaldson case, right? Check it. Where people love to continue to spread that I don't know where Maitland do it so flow. I'm woman do it. I'm police woman do it. Um, yeah. That was rebuffed and proven to not be so. When video pick up Noel going into the apartment with Donnelly and that woman was not there. And video showed nobody else came there, but Donnelly never left. So whatever else story they were spinning from the time she entered till the time she was taken out. That woman was not in the picture. Video evidence eliminates her when you tell them that you don't know where i talk about man because they so want to put her in it they this story i got sound better if she did in there them going at the house them fight them mash up the place and now it'll end up killing that one if it proves to the next one how much him love her and you know they want to spin their own spin on it so they're doing the same thing with the philip powell case so philip can't even come out and just say not, nothing too much and like i explained before he's an attorney he knows the law he knows it's better to not say nothing Keep it brief, precise to the point. I'm grieving. I pray for justice. I'm hurt. Can't believe this happened. Left it right, that's all. Kanisha Grant says, even when them see the evidence, them still go say, I know so. She's involved, period. Exactly, because it sounds better to them. Why? I don't know what to tell you all women, man, but if you can look upon this as a woman and gain some insight as to what to do and what not to do and certain people feel void and all kind of something like that, then certain situations to not put yourself in. I just wish, I just wish she wasn't so trusting. I just wish she wasn't so trusting. Because when the van pull up our gate, as she run out there from their account, She's the one that ran out there, right? I just wish she was not so trusting. Damn. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Good morning, SoFlo. How are you? I'm good, family. How are you doing this morning? Every day above ground is a blessing. Yes, indeed. I want to ask you a quick question about this girl. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to her after she gets sentenced in Jamaica? Because remember, she was serving in America as a soldier. Right. She's in the Navy. She's a sailor. Yes. Yeah, so I guess they're going to what? Discipline her for be, not being there? Yeah. Um, so how these things happen, the military have their own courts that you have to go through as a service member. It's called the UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice. But they will allow whatever is playing out to play out first in the civilian court that you got yourself caught up in. And then after that is finished, then they will lay their own charges against you. 
and then they will also execute their own punishment against you. So basically, it should have got through the same thing with um, Beach and South, Sun got through with the Navy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. So they, they won't they won't jump out and say, oh, she's guilty and it's not their case. You got caught up outside of their jurisdiction. They're going to allow these people, the Jamaican courts, to do their thing. And then based on all their investigations, findings, and whatever, trials, sentencing, after that, then they will do what they have to do, which is probably going to come down to like a dishonorable discharge and a bunch of other stuff that goes with it. Come in and listen from the um, platform where a guy asked a question and he couldn't get the answer. If she could get deported back to Jamaica when she served our time with the Navy, like him ask questions. Well, well I must say she's an American citizen. Well, that's the thing too. We don't know. This will, this will be up to U.S. immigration. This will be up to U.S. immigration. You, if U.S. immigration wants to allow you to re-enter the country after you've been convicted of kidnapping and murder and serve time in another country, that's a whole different situation. Remember, you know, your citizenship at one time, it, it was almost an act of God that your citizenship could be revoked. Those times are gone. Your citizenship can actually still be revoked. So it's up to the U.S. authorities, immigration-wise, USCIS, to say we can't let somebody like that back into our country. So strip them of their, um, strip them of their citizenship, kind of thing. That so we, we're just gonna have to see you how it will. People say no, them now when the port are she a citizen, she gonna remain. But I mean, I understand. Cause beach is south sun. We don't know. Citizen also. Yes. Yes. Then I deport him and he did a crime in America. Right. Now it's again it's up to them to take it. Okay. You know, they, we don't know. Deportation could probably still be on the table for uh Andre. You won't know until the end of his sentence. So towards the end of his sentence, he'll uh, it's it's just like what's his name? Tory Lanes. When Tory Lane shot Megan the Stallion. Uh, it finally came out that Tory is not a U.S. We knew he came from Canada, but we thought he got his papers straight and he was a citizen in the U.S. We found out he is uh, still a Canadian citizen, but he's a permanent resident in the U.S., right? So right away, they start saying deportation is on the table for him straight off the bat. But because these yeah, people because have citizenship, yeah, because these people have citizenship, then it's a different ball game. It has to go through okay. those channels. And we can't speak on what it is they're going to do. We just have to watch and see. Because sometimes they let them stay. And sometimes they send them out. Look at Flipper Mafia. Or Flip yeah, still yeah. In America. Right. And a lot of people thought Flipper would have do him time and then get deported, right? But the thing is, he never commit no crime. It's different when you commit a crime. What, what do you mean he never commit no crime? So where he go to prison for? Not fraud, he go to prison for. Then no crime? Him go prison okay. for drug dealing on a on a huge scale. Ooh. Right. Well, we'll see but, how out. Yeah, but to the part where you said crime, when you commit a violent crime, like a murder, somebody blood was spilled, they look at that in a whole different light as well. I've seen people come to the US, I mean come to Jamaica. Just the other day I covered a case where uh five US students were caught in Jamaica with how many kilos of cocaine. The cruise ship stopped in Jamaica and they disembarked the cruise ship and they disappeared for a while. And while they were getting back on the cruise ship, they found how many kilos of cocaine on those students. Do you know that they were fined? They were fined in Jamaica, no prison time, released and sent back to the US. And I think two or three of them out of the five were actually Jamaicans. Wow. And they were still allowed to travel back to the U.S. They said they didn't want to mess up their future. They are bright students. They are enrolled currently in some university in the U.S. And all this, they made a mistake. Find them, send them back on their way. And they were gone. So anything can play out. That's why we can't speak. I, mean, no, say this, I hate when people do that. This is what's going to happen. You can't speak on what's going to happen. 
the thing could swing in their favor as well as like not. certain people platform me read me listen but at the end of the day i have nothing to say i mean i wonder if the man is involved because the story kind of sounds contrary right. and go for a jog i mean so somebody can go for a jog so long right well, we have to watch. Well, let's see each other call me. And that's all we can do, you know. That part that's there. That's all we speculate. That part there. Let's see. All right. That part. Because this, this does sound right. And it kind of looks fishy. That part, my friend. Let When the court case actually starts, let's see what is said. Because she's going to speak. So let's see what yep. is said. And then, hey, if she calls certain name and make certain accusations, um, hell going to break loose then. Cause now because then we're gonna right now, you know, she don't have nothing for gain, you know. Exactly. She's done for. Yeah. So she go there, it will sting yeah. like a mockingbird. Exactly. And and lie and implicate people who shouldn't. Who, yep. Yeah, cause she feel bitter. <laughs> yeah. Come and see, a lot of women are saying it. They're saying, um, if 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 that thinking old man they never did do him do. The poor girl wouldn't be in that situation in the first place. I mean, I said to myself, said so these people are kind of like, I mean, anything to blame a man, right? Because I look at it like this. When a woman wants to leave a relationship and a man end up harming her, what do we normally say? There's absolutely no justification for you taking that woman's life. She was done with you. I don't care if she did that cheat. I don't care if she was in your house with man on your bed. You never have to chop her up like that and do that. You, you had a choice. You could have left. Right, move on with your life. That's what we're saying now. True. So how come now? So how come now when this woman decides said so this is what she wanted to do? How come now the man I get the blame? And um, oh if 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 him never stick him pickle in some place and do this and do that, the poor girl wouldn't even be involved in stuff like this. Really? You know, my granny always says anything good to the goose, good for the good yeah, that's the same way. All right. All right, my friend. Take care of yourself and big up the wife, kiss the kids for me, please. Manners and respect and same to you I'm and the family. The health yeah? and the strength. You sound like it. You sound like it. I like it. <laughs> All right, so Flo, take care of yourself. All right, family. One love here. Okay, bye. All, yeah. right. All right. Now, with that said, let's get into the beachy stout thing. And then we are going to do the brother who uh, wandered off and cannot be found last. So he's not lost in the shuffle. So people can see him and find him or help to find him. Christopher Townsend. Remember, okay, so remember I told you all right. I said that the person who is testifying right now don't sound like him, know if him coming or going. And Beachy Stout's prominent attorneys are going to have a field day with this in the courtroom. Well, so said, so done. That is what's going on right, right now, right? Here's the headline. And the headline says the lawyers. Paints second witness in Beach Star trial, which is Bubbler, paint him as a criminal and as a liar. You're up here telling lies on Mr. Beach Star. Is you plot to do this by yourself, you know? Didn't you just confess to us that you had a sexual relation with his wife as well? Yeah, so how did you feel when she pulled up to the Indian looking boy house, the police officer house? You, you, your feelings did hurt, and she leave you in a car go talk to man, right? So you had a motive then to have carried this out on your own too, right? Right? Yeah. Remember me telling you? It's not what we say outside is what can be proven in a court of law. That's how it goes. Christopher Townsend, shout out to the Jamaica Observer. One of four attorneys representing Everton. You have four. I thought it was three. One of four attorneys. Okay, yeah. So it's three for Beachy and one for um the other guy. One of the four attorneys representing Beachy Stout, McDonald, in his trial, painted a picture of Delvalin Minot, the second witness in the case, as a criminal who is willing to tell lies on even his closest relatives whenever it is convenient for him. This is how I go on in a court. Beachy Stout, a very popular businessman in Portland, and his co accused Oscar Barnes, are facing trial for the July 20th, 2020 murder of Tanya McDonald. The second wife of Beachy Stout. Now, Tanya's burnt body was found in her motor vehicle. We know the condition in which it was found up at Sherwood Forest Main Road in Portland. Townsend told the court that Minot, this man, he gave three statements to the police following the murder of Beachy Stout's second wife 
And then he admitted that he lied in one of the three statements. The man gave three different statements, then got tell the police that he made a lie in one of the statements. Them shake you already. The witness admitted during cross examination on Thursday that he didn't know whether it was the first statement or the second statement. <laughs> All right, brother. Listen. They, okay, okay. So, so you gave three statements. Cool. If you were able to come and say, listen, the first statement I gave was a lie and I was under pressure to do it, that's why I did it. My other two statements, if you notice, they make sense and they align with each other. That's different. For a man to come and say, a three statement me give, I don't remember which one of them is the lie. I told you his lawyers are going to have a field day with this. And it's, this ain't coming out like how we think it's going to come out. Thompson told the court that he gave three statements to the police following the Beaches uh, second wife murder and admitted to the court that he lied on one of those. The witness himself now admitted during the cross-examination on Thursday that I don't know which one of the first, second, or third statements that I lied on. Townsend probed whether Minot saw himself as a thief and a murderer who at times would pull his machete at people in a threatening way and who from time to time would shoot people with his fish gun. Hear this, hear this. According to Minot, so you're a bad man. Do you see yourself as a person who, you know, you pull your machete out and run down people, try to chop them up on these things and you shoot people with your fish gun, right? Do you see yourself as a menace and that kind of person or do you see yourself as an uh, upstanding citizen, this kind of thing? According to Minot, although he is currently serving a sentence for almost 20 years in prison for the murder of Tanya, he doesn't consider himself a murderer. I don't consider myself a murderer, sir. Townsend ventured into a line of questioning that showed that Minot was convicted previously for stealing. The man said, I am a convicted thief. Thompson asked Minot whether he was aware that his son gave a statement to the police describing him as the community done, his own son. But the witness said that he was unaware and me not know nothing about that. Me? Done? To the community? They said, yes, your own son gave a statement to the police that you are the don of the community. I have not been in a criminal. I, I have not been a criminal all my life, sir. I am aware. Now him say him didn't know. And now hear this. I have not been a criminal all my life, sir. I am aware that my son gave the... Yo. I have not been a criminal all my life, sir. I am aware. You just say I wasn't aware. Dan, me? My son? No, me don't know nothing about that. I have not been a criminal all my life, sir. I am aware that my son <laughs> gave the police the statement, but I am not an area done. And I wasn't aware that my son was calling me an area done. You wasn't aware your son was calling you an area done, but you were aware that your son gave the statement to the police that you are the area done. Okay. All right. That brother, you're kind of slow. You see, do you see how court different from our opinion? I know right now, Beachy Stout, fucking his, his lawyers are just rubbing their hands like this. You know, like when Birdman be looking at Lil Wayne, rubbing his hands and look like he's about to kiss him. I, I saw Beachy Stout lie at them. I look at that case I know. We going in. You got to go in for the kill. There's blood in the water. The man says, I am... I have not been a criminal all my life. I am aware that my son gave the police a statement, but I am not aware. I am not the area done. And I wasn't aware that my son was calling me area done. Him dispute the argument that him chop up people from time to time and that him love to reach for his machete in all of his disputes. At the same time, he admitted that he has shot people before using his fishing gun. 
after Townsend quizzed him up about a particular case in which he was arrested and charged for shooting a man by the name of Jimmy with a fish gun. He also asked Minot whether it was true or not that on that day that the trial was to start, in that case where him did shoot Jimmy, that Jimmy went missing. And whether it was true that because they couldn't find Jimmy or have not found Jimmy to this day, that that case got thrown out. Him say yes. It's true, sir. You shoot the man with the fish gun, the man press charges by you. The day when he was supposed to go to court, Jimmy went missing. He has never been seen again. And based on not finding him, they threw the case out. So you beat the case, all right? Him say yes, sir. <laughs> oh, God. I wish I had went to law school and I wish I could be an attorney upon the case here. And I would actually love to be Beachy Stout's attorney on this case, in at this particular. Now, I'm not rooting for Beachy to get off because, you know, people misconstrue my words. But I just find this very interesting. I find this very interesting. And if you are an intelligent attorney, there's no way you're not chopping this up right now and breaking it down all kinds of ways. Townsend also accused the witness of telling a series of lies since he was arrested. So, 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 so wait there. Wait, where Jimmy there? Where is Jimmy? Jimmy was never seen again. Jimmy disappeared, and that's how you beat your case. Yes, you're right. Hmm. Okay, word around town is that's exactly what happened to Jimmy, and that you are responsible. That's why people are referring to you as the area done. Because that is what you're known for. You bring violence easy, right? Well, I have not been a criminal all my life. All right. So Minot, however, denied that he spoke about the beach stuff. So Townsend also accused the witness of telling a series of lies since he was arrested in 2020. He said, all right now. So let's get into these. Minot, however, denied that he spoke about the beach stuff case to his cellmates at the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center in Kingston and that the case was tried amongst inmates in the jail before it even went to court. He said, no, no, go so. I never tell nobody nothing. Now, during his testimony earlier in the trial, the witness told the court that he met and he spoke to Beachy Stout for the first time when he went to the businessman wholesale place to go seek a job. Remember? He said that when he approached Mr. Beachy Stout and told him that he needed a job at the establishment, the businessman told him right away that, no, I have something better for you, a better work for you, and bring him upstairs to his office in a supermarket that he owned. That's part of where we said, don't make no rotted sense. Because if I'm a prominent businessman, I am not grabbing the, you have never seen you before, don't know you're from God, know where. I don't know if you is an undercover police. I don't know if you is a... I don't know where you is. And you come for look work at my establishment. And just off the bat, I tell you, say, I have a better work for you. Carry upstairs, go tell you, I want you to kill people. Just, 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 sir. Just, <laughs> King OG say, I'm mad, I'm mad out. Hey, just, sir. It don't make no sense to me, family. It don't make any sense to me. During his testimony earlier, the witness told the court that he met Beachy and him got a fair job and Beachy carried him upstairs and said him have a better work for you. At his own business establishment, Minot then alleged that Beachy took out his phone and showed him a photograph of a woman and told him, I want you to kill this woman, yes sir. And we will pay you $3 million for kill her. And he said that was the first time he ever saw Beachy Stout's wife. So the first day you meet the man, the man show you a picture of him wife. I said, I don't have no work for you. I don't want you to do that kind of work, man. I have a better work for you. I want you to kill my wife. That don't make no sense to me at all. That's a kind, if, if, if you're going to do that, that's something you would trust to somebody who you actually know. Right? That would be given to somebody who you actually know. 
You don't just go and tell somebody me why you kill my wife and you just meet them. Keith, Keith Honeygram says, I simp always marry these women. I get women every day and never spend money. I love do he sound like me. <laughs> Vicky, have a good day, everyone. Gotta run. Girl busy, can't type. I tried. All right, Vicky, big up yourself. We appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Dente D says, I'm sick of the commercials. Uh, I'm not seeing them showing up here in front of me, Dente D. I'll pay more attention to the screen. I'm supposed to be able to control them, but I don't see them. So tomorrow morning when we go live, I will put it on a setting that none of those run. All right? And it'll probably be a closed chat tomorrow as well. Yeah, it will be a closed chat tomorrow. So... We have finished up here now. Minot alleged that Beachy Stout took out his phone and showed him a photograph of a woman and said, I'll pay you $3 million to kill her. And that's the first time he ever saw Beachy's wife. In a twist on Thursday, Minot said during cross-examination that the first occasion when he met Beachy Stout, there was no proposal for the murder of Tanya. You see that? His story changed now. He also said on Thursday that his wife and daughter had accompanied him to Beachy Stout supermarket on the day he previously said that he met the man for the first time. There you go. His story changes again. That information, he failed to mention it in court prior to the cross-examination. So now it's no longer the first day I went to meet him. No, no, another time they happened. So my first sworn statement, I know that. Because remember now, the first time I go, I actually went with my wife and my daughter. It was not in the first conversation that he asked me to kill his wife. Other attorneys representing Beachy Stout are Earl Hamilton, Courtney Rowe, and John Jacobs. Ernest Davies is representing Barnes, and the trial was adjourned until October 23rd. So I won't be having any more updates because they went on a break, and they'll be coming back on the 23rd to continue where they left off at. Today is the 16th. So from the 23rd, we will have more going forward. I'm telling you right now, that is not a good look because they just crossed up that witness to the fullest. And everything him said has been dismantled. So like I said before, just remember, the Beachy Stout case is not going to end the way how we think or thought or some people are praying that it, going, it should end. Yeah. That way. Now, let's use our platform for some good while we go out of here. I'm not in Jamaica, but I would like for the people who are in Jamaica to take a good look at this brother right here. Take a good look at this brother right here. This is his mother's only child. He's 40-something years old, but he suffers from mental illness. And her son is gone. She hasn't seen him or heard from him in a while, and she's worried that something might have happened to him. So she's begging everybody, if you can, please help our find him and bring him home. Let's make it bigger. Help our find him. And bring him home. Right? Look at that face. I'm going to leave it on the screen for about 60 seconds just so it stays there. You know, it's one thing to have your child missing. It's another thing when it's the only child we ever have. Right? The only child we ever have. So, this story... You can also go find it in the Jamaica Observer because they have the article. But what I do know is that a lot of people don't read newspaper these days. That's why we use the platform to like highlight certain things. So he's not lost in the back pages. See? He's not lost in the back pages. The mother said, I keep calling his phone and I keep calling WhatsApp, but it keeps ringing and it goes to voicemail. I leave messages, but nobody calls me back. I call every day. So much things going on in Jamaica right now. It's scary. 
is what his mom said to the Jamaica Observer on a Sunday in an interview. Her anxiety is multiplied by the fact that Finn, who resided at Lot 415 in close proximity to the Greater Portmore Police Station, 100 Man Brayton Parkway, he suffers from a mental condition which he is being treated for. The woman said that she at her wit's end at this time and she fears that her only child might have been murdered since he has not returned home to the home that he shares with a stepmother and the siblings. He suffers from a very bad depression, but when he gets his meds, you can't even know it and become a regular person. Oh God, help me. My only child, my only baby, the only one where God blessed me with. I can't afford to lose him. The woman said that she tried on several occasions to get the police to assist her to search for him, but no one cares to help her. What? The 66-year-old mother said that she spoke to her son a few days before he was told by the relatives, by her relatives that he lives with, that he had disappeared. Before he disappeared, he called me. And I missed the call because my phone was on vibrate at the time. But I called him right back and I left a message and said, Mark, call me back. But he didn't call me back. He didn't call me back. The mother said that she tried to ascertain some other relatives how he was dressed before he left in order to supply information to the authorities. When did I wear when in the last see him? Said that their account was less than helpful. Because them don't remember what he was wearing when last seen. She also said that she was not told about her son's absence until three days after he had already gone missing. And they said that he was at the house and he was leaving, going through the gate. And the stepmom asked him about the light bill. And he left and he didn't come back. They said he had a black bag on his back. But they cannot remember what he was wearing. She said that Finn, who does not work because of his mental condition, has only disappeared once before, but he was returned home by cops. Now, after three years ago, around three years ago, he was missing, and the cops, they pick him up in Ocho Rios, a Portmore. I'm living up. You know how far Portmore is from Ochi? So he went missing from Portmore and ended up in Ochi, and the cops then brought him back before. That was three years ago. They said they saw him down there walking and wandering around. And they kept him until his dad went there to go get him. And he wasn't making any trouble at all or anything. He was just there wandering around. The mother, who said that she had attempted to file for her son so that he could live with her overseas, said that he was turned down by immigration after an interview because of a prison record, which she says had been expunged. She said, I filed for my son. And when we went to the embassy for his interview, they turned him down for something that he did not do. He was accused of breaking a glass at a game shop when he was much younger. I had his record expunged and they still turned him down twice. I see people kill people and still get to come up here. And my son didn't kill nobody. They did they said he broke a glass and he didn't even break the glass. And I had his record expunged and they still turned him down. Hmm. Sunday, a representative of the 100 man police station in Portmore, St. Catherine, then contacted, said she could not verify whether the report was made there at the time. The, indiv <laughs> the individual, after conducting an almost hour long search, told the observer that no record of a reported of a report pertaining to Finn's disappearance had ever been filed with them. She said that if the report had been made, it would have been logged and it would have been easily tracked. So nobody told us that he's missing. So she's over here saying police not helping. We never know nothing about him. Sunday, a family friend of Finn's mother told the observer that she had known the missing man from he was a baby. said that she harbors some hope that he will be found. To my belief, 
I don't feel like him pass away or anything. I feel like him still alive out there somewhere. It feel hurtful still, honestly, because I have kids too. And because I know him from he was a baby and he was not somebody who give trouble, it really hurts. He doesn't really wonder. He goes out like to church and so on. The doctor said that he is not a mad person. He has manners and he still stand up and talk to you and him listen to you. Describing him further, she said he's a peaceful person. He doesn't really talk and he doesn't give problems at all. He has a little mental issue. So I was the one who went with him to the doctor along with his uncle on one occasion. He is not somebody who walk dirty or trouble people. He will just sit and talk to himself. He's not a menace to society like go around and lick down people and stuff like that. He is not that type of person. He keeps himself clean. Him just sit down and talk to himself more time. Right? And this is her only child, which obviously he lives overseas. Uh, she, the mother, lives overseas. And her only child lives in Jamaica with father and stepmother. And she filed for him multiple times to come to the U.S. To or to overseas. They didn't say where. To live with her. And he was turned down multiple times because he broke a glass when he was way younger. So this is the person that they're looking for. He's been missing for a number of days now. We all know how that go already in Jamaica. Especially if you're a man. If you've gone missing for quite a number of days and you're a man. Well, anybody, but especially man. It's usually not a good outcome. So I'm hoping and praying that he is actually somewhere wandering around. Like the police found him three years ago. Wandering in Ocherius when he left the home in Britain, um, Portmore. If you want to see him out there, anywhere, contact your local authorities, please. And try to help to get this man back home to his family. He has mental issues. He's off his medication. He's probably hyper-confused right now and doesn't know. Here's a fun fact. When people who suffer from certain mental illnesses are off their meds and go into a certain mindset, a psychosis, they tend to wander further and further and further and further away from home. Especially if they're hearing voices. If it's anything auditory, they're probably going to hear stuff say, walk. And just keep walking, man. Walk. Catch a bus, yes, sir. Walk down there, sir. Keep walking. And before they know it, they've lost track of where they are. They don't know where they're there. And it's hard for them to even find their way back home. Which can also be dangerous for them because people will see them out there and try to harm them even though they're not bothering nobody so let's try to find him and try to get him back home keep your eyes peeled please and thank you all right all right with that said have a wonderful day we're at the top of the hour manners and respect to each and every one of you the goal is to start this morning thoughts at 6 o'clock and to go from 6 to 9 o'clock every morning. I'm going to hold myself to it. Set your, um, set your notifications and come on in and join the show. All right? There's over 2,000 people in here. I only have 700 thumbs up. I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button. All right? And I'll catch you tomorrow morning. God spare my life. One love, people. Walk good. I'm out. Peace.